there will now be an opportunity for silent prayer or meditation. Please be seated. Honorable members, in the interest of safety, for all present in the chamber, please keep your mask on and sit in your designated area and also restrict the movement from one bench to another as far as possible. The first item on the order paper is member statements. Does any member of the ANC wish to make a statement? The ANC? Yes, the first item is member statements. Thank you, Honorable House Chair. Um, under the steward leadership of Mr. Cool, Calm and Collected and Not Easily Shaken, His Excellency President Cyril Matamela Ramaphosa, the African National Congress is humbled by the emphatic victories over the last by-election held on Wednesday the 20th of April 2020. The ANC retained 10 seats and won extra two seats over the Democratic Alliance in Naisna and IFP in Mapumulo. And that's the one they have to now. Okay, and the new say volume. These results demonstrate that our people still trust us to bring better life to them. As the ANC, we do not take for granted the confidence that the voters has displayed during these elections. We commit ourselves to redouble our efforts to work with them to solve the problem faced with our people. Indeed, we are the only political party that can bring real change to their lives. We once again congratulate the IEC for delivering credible free and fair election. Lastly, we thank our committed volunteers, supporters, the motive force who work tirelessly in the buildup of this by-election and ensure a decisive Victory, singa pezul, asilali, sikate, i country. I thank you. The DA. Chairperson, for nearly two weeks, the northern Cape town of Prisca has been under siege by a toxic mix of a local mafia and opportunist local politicians. At issue, supposedly, is the nearby Orion copper mine. This mine is one of the few new medium-sized mining projects in the country. It's going ahead despite the onerous conditions of the mining charter. It has complied with everything in the Charter and all regulations. It is the kind of investment that this government says it wants. But a construction mafia is angry because it didn't get contracts at the mine. It says, unless we get 10% of this mine, we will not let you build it. They say local people have been cheated and now roads have been blocked and people threatened and attacked. It took until yesterday for police to do anything. The mine had to go to court for an interdict stopping protesters from blocking access. And where is the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy? They should be there on the ground, combating the gangster's narrative that the mine is at fault. The department should be explaining that local politicians cannot demand shares in mines or guarantees of contracts. Until we have a department that can understand and support investors, the mining industry will continue to decline. We are desperate for investment. We must look after what we get. The EFF. Jefferson. It is now almost inevitable that the country will be faced with a third wave of the COVID pandemic, which will unleash even more suffering and pain on our people. Over the past year, our leaders have learned nothing from the devastation caused by the virus in the country. It is criminal that today, after so many months of suffering, we still have no bankable plan to rapidly roll out vaccination program for our people. We have heard time and time and again about the number of vaccines the country has acquired, but the truth of the matter is that it is lagging far behind all African countries in terms of vaccinating the people. This is so, despite the fact that we have the highest COVID mortality rate in the continent. The coming devastation that will be unleashed by the third wave of virus must be put squarely on the doors of the ruling party. Your incompetence will bring about unimaginable pain and suffering on so many of our people. So many people will be left without parents because of your ineptitude. We further call on you to get a variety of vaccines that are available, which have been proven to work and to be effective against the variants found in this country. 
There must be visible upsurge in the number of people getting vaccinated. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honourable Member. The ANC. Thank you, House Chair. The ANC condemns attack on Palestinian worshippers at Al Sakya Mosque by Israel forces. The African National Congress is deeply concerned by the violent actions in the latest Israeli Palestine conflict. Recently, scores of Palestinian protesters were injured, most of them hospitalized after Israeli police dispersed worshippers at Al Sakya Mosque and elsewhere in Jerusalem. Rubber coated mallet bull uh, metal bullets, tear gas, and stun grenades were fired to the protesters for refusing the evictions. The recent clashes are provoked by the planned evictions of Palestinians from annexed East Israel to make way for Israeli settlements. As the ANC, we view this as severe violation of human rights and international accords. Such attacks, particularly during the Muslim holy month of Ramadan, are against all humanitarian norms. We reiterate our steadfast support to the Palestinian cause and the Palestinian people's rights to establish an independent state. We pray for the speedy recovery of the injured and urge the international community to take prompt action to protect the Palestinian people. Thank you, House Chair. Thank you, the IFP. The IFP, the Freedom Front Plus. Honorable Chairperson. Proceed, Honorable Member. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll do this on behalf of Honorable Flanagan. Today, as the IFP member responsible for the portfolio of women, children, and persons with disabilities, I would like to acknowledge the essential role played by the late Queen Manfombi Shiiwe Lamini Zulu as mother to the Zulu nation. She was passionate about the role and responsibilities of Zulu women and worked closely with the late King Goodwill Zulitini Kabega Zulu to revive traditional ceremonies like the reed dance. She was also held in extremely high regard by the young Zulu maidens who viewed her as a mother, as well as the maiden minders who guided these maidens. The Queen further hosted Umkosi Wesi Vivana, an annual all woman ceremony where women gather from across KwaZulu Natal as well as neighboring Swaziland to discuss challenges that they face as women in their homes and come up with solutions. The Queen was also a champion in the fight against gender-based violence, as well as substance abuse, and her wisdom and compassion will be deeply missed. In recognition of her life and work, we call upon government to redouble their efforts in the fight against gender-based violence, as well as the ongoing work to uplift the women of South Africa especially those living in our rural areas. I thank you. Thank you, Honourable Member. The Freedom Front Plus. What is unfolding in Jerusalem at the moment is a planned gathering of violent rioters led by the terrorist group Hamas and the Palestinian Authority with the goal of igniting violence and unrest in the city of Jerusalem. A part of, of terror that is being terrorist Honorable Mulder. Yes, yes, Jeff. Honorable members on the virtual platform, please be reminded that your microphones must stay muted until you are recognized to speak or when the party is called. You're causing a disturbance in the house because the members who are participating is not audible then. Honorable Mulder, will you start again with the statement, please? Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Chairperson, what is unfolding in Jerusalem at the moment is a planned gathering of violent rioters led by the terrorist group Hamas 
and the Palestinian Authority with the goal of igniting violence and unrest in the city of Jerusalem. These events are a part of a wave of terror that is being led by the terrorist organization Hamas and are the result of reckless and irresponsible incitement to violence. In recent days, rockets have been launched from Gaza and a wave of balloon attacks have caused widespread fires and severe damage. Israel has taken every measure possible to calm the situation and prevent tensions and violence. Since the unification of Jerusalem in 1967, Israel has gone to great efforts to facilitate freedom of religion and worship for all faiths in the holy city. What is happening on the ground is not a struggle for freedom of worship, it is plain terrorism. It is a pity that the South African government always finds themselves on the side opposing Israel. This is not Israel that is in breach of international law. It is the ANC government who is not respecting the sovereignty of the state of Israel. Thank you. The ANC. Thank you, your host, Chairperson. The African National Congress moves without notice that the House notes the shock and sadness, the tragic passing of a former South African rugby player, Lindani Mieni, who was shot dead by officers from the Honolulu Police Department in Hawaii following an altercation on Wednesday, 14th of April, 2021. Understand that the 29-year-old Lindani had moved to the island just over a year ago with his wife, Lindsay, who is from Hawaii, and they are two children. Recalls that he was a well-respected and God-fearing man who never showed any signs of aggression. aggression. Remembers that he failed from the KZN North Coast and attended George Campbell Technical High School in Deben as well as she, as the Shucks Academy. Further remembers member, that- Honorable member, we are busy with statements and may I request the whips of the parties to ensure that the sequence for the members who should read the statements. I cannot determine the sequence, honorable members. That is a party issue. So the members who are then going to do the motions without notice should also then wait until we get to that point. May I ask for a statement from the ANC, please? Honorable April. Thank you, Chairperson. The ANC condemns the senseless killing of Coca brothers in Pumalanga Farm. We condemn the senseless killing of the two brothers, Zenzele and Amos Coca, at Pampun Kral Farm in Pumalanga on the 9th of April, 2021. The siblings were part of a group of farm dwellers seeking employment, the seasonal farm workers. It is claimed that tension began between them and the farm owner, would, which resulted to tragic death of the brothers and an assault on a third person. We condemn police, we, we commend the police for their quick response in arresting the alleged offenders who have since appeared in the Peter Ratif Magistrates Court. We are concerned by this constant killing of farm employees on farms. And, the and we are urging the government to come up with measures to end these brutal farm attacks. We call for calm amongst the community members. The law should be allowed to take its course and ensure that those found guilty would, would, would uh, face the full might of the law. We would like to send our heartfelt condolences to the Coca family in the passing of their loved ones. I thank you. Thank you. The DA. Residents of the city of Ikruleni are being subjected to the biggest waste crisis in the history of the city. We call on the Minister of Cocta and the Minister of Environment and Fisheries to investigate the entire waste crisis enveloping the city. The problems associated with daily round collections, the closure of landfill sites, the non-payment of the private lands, landfill sites, the vacancies in the department, the lack of proper supply chain, contract management, and the hollowing out of infrastructure and expertise. Just this year, it was announced that the SIU will be investigating allegations of corruption in the Karolini municipality with 24 million rand for a waste collection vehicle tender. Residents of the COE deserve to live in a healthy environment where Section 24 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa provides a mandate on the state to ensure environmental protection and ecologically sustainable development. 
The National Environmental Management Waste Act of 59 of 2008 aims to reform the law regulating waste management in order to protect health and the environment by providing reasonable measures for the prevention of pollution, ecological degrad degradation, and for securing ecologically sustainable development. Mayor Messina needs to ensure paying residents receive efficient refuse removal services in the city of Ikoroleni and that tender processes are conducted lawfully and with due processes. The UDM. Uh, Chairperson, to consult on the advisability of conducting a half hour meeting. President Ramaphosa announced 27 October as election day. Why invite leaders of parties to a meeting at all? One wonders who their true masters are. The UDM then propose that elections are postponed to 2022 or to when it is safe to do so and that parliament takes steps to make it possible. We again make this call in this house today. COVID-19 has irrevocably changed our lives. Our healthcare system are under strain at the moment. Vaccination is at a snail's pace. Infections and deaths keep increasing. A third wave is a very real threat, and we might uh, stare further lockdowns in the face, judging by the Indians' experience. Scientists international and at home have advised against holding elections as they are super spreader events, yet our own president does not heed the warning because he must appease his political allies at the expense of ordinary South Africans. The president himself, rather, colleagues, we understand the mechanics of election campaigns. Political parties hold public gatherings, make door-to-door -door calls, and hand out election material like flyers. All these activities are literally dangerous to the lives of our campaigners and our voters and risk the exponential spread of COVID-19. South Africa is far behind in terms of technology, and it is still relatively expensive. Therefore, calling for campaigns to be conducted through technology, technology platform is dis disingenuous. Otherwise, we have one other thing COVID. We are ready for election. You must go and campaign when. Honourable members, point of order, chair. who is calling for a point of order? Do you have a visual platform? Yes, Honourable Khadebe. Yeah, uh, Honourable Hale Musa has just told another member to go to hell. I, I think according to, to Rule 84, it is not parliamentary. Number two, he said the members of parliament are thieves. The, uh, you, again, on rule 84. Thank you, Honorable Khadebe. You see, Honorable Khadebe, the problem arise when there's other members who are also commenting. And I will now have to rely on the table staff who are here to check that video recording and to see if such a comment has been made. I want to once again call on all the chief whips of political parties to ensure that their members acquaint themselves once again with the rules of the virtual city. You cannot just simply switch on your microphone and then make comments. And then when there's a point of order, you expect the presiding officer to have heard everything that took place on that platform. It's impossible to do so. So I'll request the NA table to look into the matter and to advise me accordingly. The ANC. Thank you very much. The NC welcomes the plans to revitalize and expand the Imbali Education Precinct project, which was started in 2014 as a ministerial project. This is a pilot project that explores an alternative modality of education delivery based on closer multi educational institutional cooperation. It is intended to be the first of three areas to be established 
as part of the new national plan for post-school education and training, with the next one earmarked to bring Kian and Limpo. This project is also in line with the aims of the Department of Higher Education, Science and Innovation to align skills development and innovation <clears throat> much closer. The intention is to integrate universities, student colleges, CITAS, and our national systems on innovation in order to produce a well-rounded uh, student who is able to find their space within the working world. We also welcome the inclusion of innovation and cultural programs to ensure that there is no area of student development which is left undeveloped. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. The ATM. The ANC. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairperson. The ANC caucus welcomes the move by the Department of Environmental Affairs, Forestry and Fisheries to ban the breeding captive lions and keeping them in captivity for commercial purposes. Following a report from the high level panel that was appointed in October 2019 by the department to look at this practice and complaints from society. The panel found that the lion captivity poses a risk to sustainable wild, wild lion conservation and negative, ne negatively impacts on forests. Currently between 8,000 and 12,000 lions and big cats, including tigers and cheetahs, are bred and kept in, activity, in captivity in various facilities in the country. We believe this is a courageous move by the department that will benefit wildlife. Lions remain where they belong in the wild. This move will ensure the protection of wild lions and safeguard friends of South Africa from reputational damage. The treatment of particularly lions and rhinos, rhinos, rhinos is unacceptable and detrimental to the image of South Africa as a prime tourist destination. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Member. The DA. Thank you, Chairperson. No sector in South Africa has been spared by COVID-19's global trail of devastation. South Africa's long lockdown worsened the high levels of unemployment and other social ills. Breadwinners became grant recipients. This and other forms of devastation were visited on millions of South Africans. The far-reaching impact and a need to urgently combat this led to the President Cyril Ramaphosa's impassioned plea during a GBV online dialogue on the 22nd of June 2020, when he said, and I quote, I want all social workers who are unemployed right now to be brought into employment because there are many wounds and there are many scars in our society and some of them manifest themselves in all these terrible things that are happening to our women. Almost a year later and the now in the president's impassioned call has not materialized. The scars and wounds he referred to are still and continue to be gaping, leaving families and communities in devastation, anguish, violations and deep hurt. At the last count, South Africa had 9,000 unemployment social work graduates. This while there was a need to provide psychosocial support at old age homes, homeless shelters, abused women shelters, and so on. All these needs still prevail, but the president's call remains unheeded. There is no shortcut to healing the scars of wounds the president referred to and to employ social workers to do this important work. These South Africans deserve no less. The ANC government's lack of caring has never been in such full display. Thank you, Chairperson, and I'm sorry. Disturbance. There's a disturbance. It almost sounds as if somebody, a member, is busy cutting grass. Right? I hope it's an occasion for now, honorable members, honorable members, let's observe also the time. You only have one and a half minutes to make a member statement. Only one and a half minutes, not more than that. The EFF. Thank you so much, Chairperson. On the 7th of May, um, Judge Davis ruled on a matter between the National Lotteries Commission versus the Minister of Trade and Industry and Competition. 
Judge Davis ruled and he said, the decision of the Minister of Trade, Industry and Competition to appoint Ms. Zandile Brown as acting chairperson of the National Lotteries Board with effect from the 1st of December, 2020 and all extensions of that appointment are declared invalid and are hereby reviewed and set aside. So we must all ex welcome this judgment. As the EFF, we have warned that the minister has malicious intentions and he's manipulating the process to appoint a chairperson of the National Lotteries Commission. And this can only be for nefarious reasons. We are vindicated by the court judgment, the same way we are vindicated by the process of parliament. The intentions here is to manipulate the process of appointing the chairperson so that HCI and Remgro are corruptly awarded the lottery license after they've made donations to the CR-17. We must never forget that Minister Patel initially wanted to handpick and impose his initial his preferred chairperson without involving parliament. It was only after the EFF intervened and parliament had to restart the process and transparently as per the National Lotteries Act. We want to warn the minister that this, is seeming, this seemingly corrupt intent to want to use the state process to reward people who donated to CR17 while undermining the law and the rules of parliament is unwarranted and we will be looking at him and we will be watching him and we will act as Honorable Khadebe. Yes, Chairperson, uh, the, the member who just put in has said the minister has got a corrupt intent. I think such a statement can be only be made on a substantive motion. It is unparliamentary. We have a substantive motion. Which Chair, has... Chair, order, Honorable, Chairperson. Honorable, order, members, Chairperson. Honorable members, I am now addressing the member who read the statement. Honorable member, did you say the minister had a criminal intent? We said he had a nefarious intent, which we have written about, which is why we now have a process where Parliament is into corrupt intent. You, honourable members, supposed to be in line honorable, for the position of the NLC. Honourable member, we will look into the statement. I certainly heard the word corrupt somewhere. I don't know yeah. in which part of corrupt the statement. Intent. Honorable Khadebe, you are a whip in a house whip. And you should understand that when the presiding officer address your point of order, that you cannot interrupt the presiding officer. It's one of the basics of, of raising a point of order. So give us space to do our work so that we can get on with the business of the house. We look into the statement and revert if necessary. The ANC. Chairperson, I'm raising on a point of order in Kalipia. What is the point of order, honorable member? Chairperson, uh, please, honorable Khadebe must not disturb our members while she's still speaking. He have a right to raise a point of order. Aye, that's, not a point of order that's not a point of order, That's not a point of order. He have a right to, to, to rise after she have uh, 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 spoke, uh, spoke on her, her statement, not while she's still on the floor, Chairperson. Please protect our members. Meta has been dealt with. Don't prolong it any further. I said I will come back to the house if necessary to make a ruling on the matter. The ANC. Uh, uh, Chairperson, uh, the ANC welcomes the two public service and administration bills that seeks to close gaps in public service related legislation. The amendment to the public service act to move administrative powers to heads of department and national departments, provincial departments and entities provides that all administrative powers are placed on heads of department, which is crucial to achieving an efficient and professional public service. The proposed amendments to the Public Administration Management Act provide for the transfer of employees across the spheres of government without the consent of employees where such transfers is operationally justified and after due consideration of representations from the affected employee. Further, it also clarifies that employees appointed ex officio on SOE boards are not 
uh, constitute within the scope of the prohibition, public events, servants cannot do business with the state and cannot receive remuneration for serving on those boards. These uh, reforms will serve to ensure that anything that affects the efficiency, performance, and the ultimate delivery of service to the people will be urgently dealt with and speedily resolved. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. Al Jama. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable House Chair. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Biru bidam nadika ya aksa. Biru bidam nadika ya aksa. I our souls, I our blood, all for you, Al Aksa. The Al Jama political party condemns the confiscation of the holy keys of Al Aksa Mosque, the firing of Al Aksa staffers, and the brutal attacks carried out by the Israeli regime against Palestinians while spraying at Al Aksa Mosque after fasting since dawn. The attack took place at the same time after sunset, the same time President Ramaphosa broke fast with Muslims in Cape Town. He would have been horrified if such an attack took place at the Islamia mosque where he was, the precise moment he put the date in his mouth. Attacking a place of worship at any time is reprehensible, but attacking a mosque during Ramadan is utterly indefensible when Palestinians put the date in their mouth. They are occupiers and child killers, and it's sad that honorable members support child killers and occupiers because of their love for apartheid. Biru bidam na nika ya aksa. Biru bidam na nika ya aksa. By our souls, by our blood, all for you, O Al Aksa. Thank you very much, Honorable Austria. Thank you, Honorable. The ANC. Honorable House Chaperson, my name is Judith Chabalalam on the virtual. The ANC acknowledges the employment opportunities that were created by the Presidential Youth Employment Initiative, which is certainly coming to an end. Its duration of five months from December 2020 to the 30th April 2021 created more than 320,000 education and general education assistants who were placed in general in the schools around the country. In the first phase, more than 27,600 school governing body funded posts in public and government subsidized independent schools were saved from uh, because of the funding provided to assist the schools. The program used the direct public investment to create employment opportunities and to provide support to workers negatively impacted by the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Of the more than 320,000 successful candidates, 67% were education assistants and 33% were general school assistants. We look forward to the discussions which are underway to review and repackage the initiative with a proposed second phase to commence later this year. I thank you. Thank you, Honourable Member. Honourable Members, that concludes Member Statements. Are there any ministerial responses? May I request Members of the Executive and Deputy Ministers who are on the virtual platform to indicate whether they want to reply to any statement by simply raising their hand or by indicating indicating uh, by pressing your button and activating your microphone, please. Are there any ministerial responses? Uh, yes, Chair, uh, from Health. Please proceed, Honorable Deputy Minister. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Chairperson. Um, I want to respond to uh, the statement by Honorable Member from the EFF about the vaccination program. Uh, uh, the government of South Africa led ably by President Ramaphosa would indeed have liked to be quite far in the vaccination program by now to save lives. But as we know that um, everything was, has been done to acquire the vaccines. We had the unfortunate incident where a million uh, vaccines from AstraZeneca were already in the country when they were proven not to be very effective against the variant which, which is dominant in South Africa. Uh, those vaccines were subsequently uh, sold to the AU and are helping in our other African countries, especially in the North. 
uh, we rolled out the uh, JNJ uh, Sisonga vaccine, which by now has already vaccinated as of yesterday, just under 400,000, 395,000 uh, health workers. And by Friday this week, we'll have completed uh, 500,000 health workers. At the same time, I'm pleased to inform the Honorable House that uh, by now we have received 650,000 doses of the Pfizer vaccine, out of which 325 have already been cleared uh, for compliance and is ready to be rolled out to all our uh, provinces. Uh, the other 325 should be ready also by the end of the week. And by Monday next week, we expect a, a consignment of another 325,260 uh, Pfizer vaccines. And the same week uh, of next week, we expect the delayed J and J uh, vaccines, uh, 1 million doses. Already more than 800,000 of the over 60 of our population have already registered on our vaccination program. So honorable chair and members, we want to assure the honorable members and the county that while we regret the fact that there has been uh, delays which were uh, beyond our control technical and uh, 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 in terms of uh, scientific matters, which made it, uh, which, which, which prevented us from starting with the mass vaccination. We are now ready as I speak to you, our teams from national and provincial are busy finalizing the logistics of making sure that as starting by next week, uh, the, the more than 1.5 million doses, which, are, uh, which will be available, as I've said, we already have 650,000 all those just under 2 million will start to be rolling out to the country. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Deputy Minister. Are there any further ministerial responses? Are there any further ministerial responses? We do have a number of uh, ministers and deputy ministers on the platform, Chief Whip. So that's why I'm asking them to indicate whether they want to respond or they wish to respond to the statements. Are there any further ministerial responses? Chair, can I come in? Deputy Minister Mahaule, basic education. Please, please proceed. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm responding on the statement by members saying, complimenting the presidential employment initiative. Indeed, it made an impact in the young people of South Africa. And it shows that what people are saying about young people that they don't want to work, South Africans, young people of South Africa want to work. That's why they were working. And there's an impact in the schools where they were. They assisted in assisting teachers, changing the image of the schools. So we really appreciate and everybody would want to see the program coming back. Thank you so much, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Deputy Minister. Are there any further ministerial responses? Honorable Chairperson. Are you a minister or deputy minister, Honorable Member? No, no, I'm just rising on, on, on a point of order, mm -hmm. Honorable Chairperson. It's, it's Singh, yeah? Please see it, Honorable Member. Yeah, I, I see, Honorable Chairperson, you've called quite a few times for ministers or deputy ministers to respond. I believe this matter should be referred to the Rules Committee or to the Speaker, because we have member statements you know, at every plenary and ministers should be prepared to answer questions and, and, and respond to these statements. And I think it's not acceptable that you know, we, just, we can't get six ministers to respond to the statements of members. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. The Honorable Member, we will certainly discuss the matter outside of the industry so that we can ensure that we do have the responses to the statements. So members, that concludes. Wonderful. Um, wonderful okay. Chairperson. Minister Delilia, I have my hand up, please. But we couldn't see it on the virtual. Sorry. And Honorable, and Honorable Creasy. Yes, Chair. Okay, let's do the Honorable Delo, followed by the Honorable Creasy. The Honorable Delo. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Um, I just want to give a brief report on the Presidential Employment Stimulus Package and the figures as at of the end of February. 
um, we have created a total of 593,000 uh, work opportunities. Um, and the breakdown of that honorable chairperson is that in uh, basic education, just over 344,000, uh, social development, 111,000, uh, agriculture, land reform, and rural development, uh, just over 74,000. The environment, uh, forestry and fisheries, uh, just over 50,000. Transport, uh, 37,000. Sports, arts and culture, just over 34,000. Uh, cooperative governance and municipal infrastructure maintenance, uh, about 25,000. And then trade and industry and competition, 8,000. Under health, we have created 5,531. Science and innovation, about 1,900. And public works and infrastructure, 1,560. That gives us a total of just over 593,000 as at the end of February. Uh, the figures of the end of um, March uh, is available, Chairperson, and we can um, provide that to, to the Honourable Member. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honourable Minister. I now call upon the Honourable Minister of Environment, Forestry and Fisheries, the Honourable Creasy. Thank you very much, uh, Honourable House Speaker. Uh, with regard to the issue of waste management in Akuraleni, I think it is important to share with this house that our department is actively working with all municipalities to improve the regulatory environment around landfills and also to address the issue of ensuring that there is adequate landfill space available. We are also, uh, we have also worked with National Treasury to ensure that where municipalities do not have sufficient finances to enhance collection services from households, that uh, special dispensation is made available for them to be, be using the MIG grant for the Yellow Fleet. I would want to suggest that where there are concerns regarding tender irregularities, SCORPA would be the appropriate institution for the, these matters to be considered. I would want to also thank the honorable member who uh, supports the recommendations of the high level panel and to advise honorable members that we are in the process over the next couple of weeks of meeting with different sectors to explain the recommendations of the high level panel. And we will then be putting out for public comment a policy statement that encompasses the major recommendations. Thank you very much, House Chair. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Are there any further ministerial responses? If not, that concludes ministerial responses and the Secretary will read the first order of the day. Consideration of report of Portfolio Committee on Transport on Civil Aviation Amendment Bill. I now recognize the Honorable the Chief Whip of the Majority Party. Thank you very much, House Chair. House Chair, I move that the House adopt this report. The motion is that the report be adopted. Are there any objections? No objections agreed to. The Secretary will read the second order. Second reading debate, Civil Aviation Amendment Bill. I now recognize the Honorable Minister of Transport. The Honorable Minister. Is the Minister is on the virtual platform. Honorable Minister Mbalula. Uh, thank you, Honorable uh, Chair. I can't, I don't know whether you can hear me. You are audible, you may proceed. Yes, uh, my video is muted. Uh, I don't know, but it's okay if, because it's not me.
No, it's okay. You may proceed, Honorable Minister. Um, we can see you now. Please proceed. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Our track record as um, a country with impeccable credentials on aviation safety, particularly in respect of commercial aviation, is something we must be proud of and sustain at all costs. This includes extending a similar track record to a non-commercial aviation as a signatory to the Chicago Convention and a member of the International Civil Aviation Organization. We must do everything in our power to lead by example in ensuring and sustaining safety of our airspace. There is no doubt that once this bill is passed into law, it will ensure that South Africa continues to meet international obligations in the civil aviation arena. This, in effect, will strengthen the sector's contribution to South Africa's economic development and to serve as a catalyst for increased trade, tourism, and job creation. We cannot emphasize enough that this bill enables us to continue making strides in our contribution to the global effort of aviation safety. Since the promulgation of the Civil Aviation Act of 2009, certain sections of chapter four of the act have never been brought into effect due to practical difficulties in the establishment of the aviation safety investigation board this bill addresses all these issues and in its passage and its passage will exponentially strengthen our aviation incident and accident investigation the independence of this board is an important factor that will bolster the robustness and objectiveness of all incident and accident investigations. <clears throat> the bill also provides for the conclusion of a performance agreement between the minister and the aviation safety investigation board. This is important in ensuring that the board delivers on its mandate and its work is in keeping with the provisions of the international conventions and treaties. Streamlining and strengthening of appeals mechanisms is critical in ensuring that those who are grieved by decisions taken in terms of this act have recourse. Streamlining the appeals bodies also creates a single focal point for all appeals, which ensures accessibility to all those who wish to lodge appeals. The importance of uh, broadening the mandate of the South African Civil Aviation Authority, SACA, to include environmental protection is an important step towards realizing our own commitment to meeting the targets of the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. The bill further introduces an important provision of making SACA a preferential creditor. However, this own this is only in respect of monies collected and held on its behalf. This is no different from an employer collecting tax revenue on behalf of SARS. Such monies are not related to any commercial arrangement between SACA and a particular entity, but is collected on behalf of uh, South African civil aviation in terms of the law. The bill similarly seeks to strengthen the South African Civil Aviation uh, Authority by strengthening a number of governance issues, which include provisions for the removal of the Commissioner for Civil Aviation. This also extends, this also extends uh, to the provisions of a shareholder representative on the part of the authority. I thank you, Chairperson and honorable members. Thank you, Honorable Minister. I now recognize the Honorable Zwane, the Chairperson of the Committee. House Chair, thank you for recognizing me. Um, 
Honorable Minister of Transport, um, Comrade Figilem Balula, and all the ministers who are with us, uh, both on visual and in the house. Honorable Deputy Minister Dikele Dimakazi and all the deputy ministers that are with us on visual or in the house. Honorable members of Portfolio Committee on Transport. Honorable members of this August house. I take this opportunity to sympathize with all the victims of the accidents in our roads, especially the accident that happened in Kilolis Road in Gauteng province this morning. It will be remiss of me to ignore the recent spate of accidents that happened in the aviation sector. South Africa reported 14 air crashes in January 2021 alone the highest number since Black October, 2008. Eight people died in, in these crashes. There was an air crash on the 4th of February in the Northwest province where one, one person bent beyond recognition. A 52 year old tragically died after the crop spraying light aircraft he piloted crashed into a field in the free state to mention but a few. My sympathy also goes to the families who have lost their loved ones due to COVID-19 pandemic. May the almighty be with them during these trying times. Let me also join all South Africans who celebrated the 25 years of the passing of the first democratic constitution in this country recently. Coming back to the family of transport and today's business, I consider myself extremely fortunate to be part of the portfolio committee that was tasked to bring to, fi to finality the civil aviation amendment bill that was referred to the committee on the 14th of November, 2018. And on the 7th of May, the bill lapsed, lapsed in terms of the National Assembly Rule 333, subsection 2. And on the 29th of October 2019, the bill was revived by the National Assembly. The bill with amendments also from the Portfolio Committee on Transport amends the Civil Aviation Act of 2009. Amendments include, among other, th other things, the provision of operational independence of aircraft accident and incidents in investigation, rectifying provisions about establishing the South African Civil Avi Aviation Authority, including giving it an environmental protection oversight function and providing for it as a preferred creditor in respect of any money fees, charges, or levies collected on its behalf. Doing away with the requirements for the development of a corporate government plan, governance plan, amending provision concerning appointment and removal of the commissioner for civil aviation. Amending provisions relating to the performance agreement between the minister and the aviation safety investigation board, clarifying provision dealing with conflict of interest, pro providing for the designation of the chairperson of the National Aviation Security Committee and matters connected with its operations. While inquiring into the subject of the bill during the public hearings and deliberations, the Portfolio Committee on Transport realized it was necessary to amend other provisions of the Principal Act not included in the bill and to further extend public consultations. The committee received submissions, a submission from the South African Civil Aviation Authority, SACA, regarding its preferential creditor status when the license service provider that collect 
fees on its behalf becomes insolvent. The envisaged amendments, which were not in the Civil Aviation Amendment Bill, revived in 2019, would allow SACA to be one of the first in line with creditors to get their fees. This would be either through a trust or ring fence fund as preferential shareholders through the Insolvency Act. The committee also received written submissions from Airlines Association of South Africa. Which was, which was represented by Dr. Fermute. The Commercial Airlines Associ Association of Southern Africa, which was represented by the following. Mr. René Van Zee, Mr. Herman Veldenburg, Mr. Mali George Butelezi, Mr. Mashaba, and, and Dr. Brian Sackley. The committee held public hearings and considered proposed amendment in the bill on the 4th of March, 2020. And it again on the 16th and 17th of February held the same in 2021. Oral submissions were received from ASA and SACA. The committee as required also gave the Department of Transport an opportunity to, to respond to oral and written submissions to further allow thorough engagements on the bill. Thereafter, the committee engaged on both submissions by the stakeholder and the department as it earlier had promised the stakeholders that it will pay attention to all the submissions that came its way. To illustrate this point, Mr. Mashaba commented during the submissions that the definition of the word director of investigations should be deleted and be replaced by the word executive responsible for accident investigations. Indeed, as we engage with the department, we agreed that this will be the case and the act should only define the words that I used in the act. In this case, I, in this case, I mentioned a car. At this point, uh, I wish to thank the members of the Portfolio Committee on Transport for their hard work. Also thank the minister and the deputy minister and the officials of the Department of uh, Transport for their dedication and commitment during the process of finalizing the amendment bill. I also wish to thank all the stakeholders who made an oral and written submissions to enrich this bill and presented themselves during the public hearings for us to understand their concerns better. The ANC support this amendment bill, I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. The next speaker is the Honorable Hansinger. Thank you, Chairperson. With the establishment of the Regional Civil Aviation Act in 2009, it provided for two essential functions in aviation regulatory needs. One being of commanding nature to promote civil aviation safety and security, and the other of analytical nature in response to crashes, accidents, and incidents. This was justified given the conglomerate of various pieces of legislation each dealing with a segment of aviation legislation causing overlap on the one hand and shortfalls on the other, all of which needed improvement and consolidation at the time in 2009. It was therefore important to now review these governing factors of our aviation industry in South Africa. Imperative, therefore, was to now improve proper implementation and to update our legislative framework given some developments in conceptual and operational renewal of the aviation industry and changes in international practices, agreements, and conventions. The DA encouraged increased responsibility of environmental protection regulations as one of the updated future functions of the CAA. This to allow for improvements in the management of aircraft noise through monitoring, reporting, measurement, and sound abatement procedures, 
also aircraft emissions to manage and sustain local air quality and to oversee progress with a carbon offsetting reduction scheme for international aviation, better known as Corsia in the industry. Updates in our governing legislation was necessary, such as the concept of aerodrome, which refers to a aerospace location from which flight operations take place regardless of whether they involve cargo or passengers. Consequential to such additions caused introduction of future new roles and functions, such as aerodrome managers and inspectors. It was also important to refine details, such as the distinction between heli stop and heli port, and to accommodate with improved clarity SANDF customs and SAPS aircraft within certain civil aviation regulations under specific circumstances. Improvements initiated by the DA included that Parliament will in future conduct interviews and make a recommendation of at least seven names to the minister to appoint the five members of the Aviation Safety Investigations Board. Also, that an inquest must be conducted in respect of any aircraft accident or incident resulting in deaths in terms of the Inquest Act, and most importantly, that the results of such an inquest must be communicated to the next of kin of the deceased. We found this necessary as an important accountability function and to now include family who often were not accommodated in any communication following an unfortunate tragic aviation incident. A period of at least four months was agreed upon as the minimum time prior to changes of CAA charges, fees and levies, or any amendment thereto, all of which must be published in the Gazette. Some of these monies are collected on behalf of CAA, and in instances where such a person who has collected any monies on behalf of CAA is liquidated, placed under business rescue or under administration, CAA will be entitled to recover such dues but now in future as a preferential creditor. While the Aircraft Accident and Incident Investigation Authority, as expressed in this bill, now finally complies with our international obligations, recognizing removal of some points of conflict of interest, the DA is of the opinion that this function should be totally independent and ideally separate from CAA, something we will continue to drive and promote. In conclusion, Chair, the DA supports the um, PCOT report on this matter, and we regard the content of the Civil Aviation Amendment Bill in its proposed form to Parliament as an improvement which should be accepted and passed. I thank you. Thank you, Honourable Member. The next speaker is Honourable Chabangu. The Honourable Chabangu, are you on the virtual platform? Yes, sir. Please proceed. So where, where air transport is first becoming an accessible for transport for many, it is therefore of critical importance that state must take practical legislative measures to tighten safety measures for air transport. The Civil Aviation Act was intended to, amongst other things, provide for this aspect and to create an independent entity that would investigate aviation accidents. This was, this was however, not done because the Act did not provide for the full spectrum of rights for the establishment of this entity. We therefore welcome the amendment to eliminate the legal uncertainties and provide for the establishment of that independent entity. The aviation provided with sufficient operational independence to conduct aviation incidents and accidents without fear or favor. We have seen a very worrying spike in aviation accidents in this country 
particularly in light aircraft owned by the very rich. These accidents are as a result of a fragment disregard for aviation safety protocols because the owners of these aircrafts are basically law unto themselves and feel that their wealth makes them unaccountable to uh, no one. Just in January this year, there were 14 aviation accidents in the country, as alluded to, and state taking any action minister. The establishment of the Aviation Safety Investigation Board will go a long way in ensuring that accidents uh, of this nature are thoroughly investigated and action taken when it is discovered that these accidents are as a result of negligence and poor training. The bill could have gone further than it has to impose tougher penalties for negligence and purposeful disregard for aviation safety protocols. The establishment of the Aviation Safety Investigation Board also makes us compliant to international laws and protocols of aviation safety. The bill further introduces a very important amendment in relation to the role of the Civil Aviation Authority Environmental Protection. Aviation is one of uh, the biggest uh, emitters of greenhouse gases, hastening the devastation that will be brought by climate change. This requires the Aviation Authority to have oversight over the whole spectrum of environmental issues emanating from aviation in this country, from noise to air quality and gas emission. We also welcome amendment dealing with the prohib prohibition of any employee of the Aviation Authority from working for any players involved in aviation while at the same time employed by the Aviation Authority. This is important because the aviation industry is a relatively small and close industry, making conditions conducive for collusion and corrupt practices. This must be clear lines of delineation between the Aviation Authority as a regulatory body and the industry upon which it uh, must uh, provide oversight. The EFF therefore supports the Civil Aviation Amendment B. Thank you. Honorable Deputy Speaker, are you on the platform? Honorable yes, Deputy I Speaker. am. Yes, sir, I've been waiting for you. Thank you for waiting. You may now take over the presiding of the Member. Thank you very much. Uh, the chance now is for Honorable K.P. Stole. Good job. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker, and uh, uh, thank you, Honorable Members. The Civic Aviation Amendment Bill 6 to ensure that the South African Civic Aviation Authority should be afforded providential credit as status. This proposal is important for this schedule three public entity, as its, man, as its mandate is Sorry. very important for the critical no, role it plays WWE 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 and safety and security. Why they, they may be, there may be many other services providers in the aviation industry, none are charged with the same level of responsibility for the safety of South African citizens and industry, given the, respons the, the responsibility of this entity for the safety and security of this country, skies, we, have, we need a strong, full capacitated, capable and corrupt, corruption free SACA. Many of us take for granted the importance of safety in the aviation sectors, yet safety in these sectors play a very important role in contribution to our economy through safety of travel, safety for the thousands of passengers who make sure who make use of aircraft daily. We let us not forget the potential for devastation on the ground should be worse happened. 
to avoid this safety and sound financial management must be cornerstone of the aviation industry. One cannot live without the other and we cannot afford the, the means of our aviation safety record in, in some way that we, we see other entities failing at the hands of current administration. This means that as a country, we need to build strong institutional capacity in the aviation industry with people who, who actively hold each other to account to make sure that the best possible standards are, are, are normalized within the sectors. Accordingly, the IFP is poorly that the introduction of the bill directly impacts the autonomy held by provinces to determine the location of their aerodromes. As we ensure that their aerodromes are in areas where they do not have a negative impact of the economy, the minister within this bill now bears too, bears too much centralized power that it does not compare him or her to consult with municipalities, mayors and premiers on the best practice that are unique to each provinces. Likewise, the centralization of power in the appointment persons to fit the vacancies of the aviation safety board is very concerned, given the importance for fit and proper people to be appointed and further to not allow for any kind of maladministration. administration. The IFA proposed that a similar setup as to how judge appointed by the GSE, GSC be implemented to appoint board members of the Aviation Safety Board. Once the public has had the opportunity to review candidate, recommendation can be made to the minister so that we, he or she can appoint suitable candidate. This essentially, if the government is really interested in participation and transparency for the benefit of our country, the IFP has, the IFP do support the bill. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Deputy. Uh, speaker. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, Honorable P. May. Thank you. Of the Freedom Front Plus. Go ahead, sir. A wet is nie staat is nie, maar moet verander word soos omstandighede dit vereis. In die geval van burgerlijke luchtvaart is het ook belangrijk om trek te hou met internationale standaarde. Die wijziging wat die deputeerde komitee oor vervoer voorgestel is, is een groot verbetering op die huidige wetgeving. Als het bij die uitleg van de wet kom, moet, wetgever, moet die bedoeling van die wetgever duidelijk wees. Dit is moeilijk gemaakt dat die inzetten wat door verschillende instanties op persoonen gelever is. Met alle hulp van die deputeerde komitee oor vervoer behoorlijke wijzigings aanbring wat tot voordeel van Zuid-Afrika en sy mense is. Daar is baie aandag gegee aan die bewoording van definitie. So bijvoorbeeld in die toekomst sal ons nie meer praat van een, een, een airport manager nie, maar airport aerodrome manager. Not anymore. Die baie weier, dit het een baie weier betekenis as lichthaven. Een directeur van ander na commissaris. Burgerlijke luchtvaart overheid krijg ook een oorzichtfunksie oor omgeving beskerming. Een werknemer van die departement voor vervoer mag een lid word in die burgerlijke luchtvaart overheidsraad. De teer van onderzoeker zal niet meer gebruikt worden, nie, maar wel onderzoeker. Die aanwijs van leden voor die luchtvaartveiligheidsonderzoekraad is baie belangrijk. Die parlement moet onderhouden voor in tenminste 7 mensen. De zeven mensen in orde van voorkeur aan die minister voorlezen om vijf leden aan te wijzen voor die luchtvaartveiligheidsonderzoekraad. Die, die luchtvaartveiligheidsraad zal hulle functie op een deeltijdse basis bekleed. Waar een vliegongeluk plaatsvindt, die persoon die oorlede is, zal een gerechtelijke nadoodse onderzoek gehou word en daar sal met die uh, oorledenis sy naastes gecommuniceerd moet word. Een belangrijke wijziging soos uitgewees door die voorzitter van die portefeuille komitee is echter oor die invordering en oorbetaling van geld aan die burgerlijke luchtvaart overheid. In die verlede het hulle geen voorkeur uit gehad nie. Met die wijzigings wat nou aangebring word, sal daar die voordeel kan geniet. Hierdie nieuwe voorgestelde onderzoek lichaam is een stap in die rechte richting. Die vrijheidsfront is echter bekommerd oor een pa, paar bekommernisse oor hierdie wetsomwerk. 
In die eerste instantie, daar wordt geen melding gemaakt van waar van fonds, de fondsen vandaan gaan komen. Nie. Die onderzoek lichaam wil blijken om nu totaal onafhankelijk te wezen en zal naar alle redelijke begrip onder die lichtvaart overheid steeds dien. Ons, daar zullen ook meer gekwalificeerde personen naar voren moeten komen. Die lichtvaart overheid is reeds onder beman en van die personen wat werkzaam is bij die overheid het geen lichtvaart ervaring heeft. Daarom moet gewaak word in die aanstelling van onervaren en ongekwalificeerde personen. Personen moeten op Marieke aangesteld worden. Ja, dat is recht. Die feit dat er een gelaag is, die lopen die die minister afgekondigd wordt, zonder die nodige inzetten van nodige rolspelers of die portefeuille komitee, schept kommer, aangezien lichtvaart en in specialist industrie is. Hier die onderzoek, lichaam, zijn hoofdtaak met wie is om lichtvaart veiliger te maken en onderzoek onder gelukkig te voorkom. Die vrijstroom ondersteun hier die verslag. Baie dankie. Uh, Achbar uh, Steve Swart, is hier sy kans nou. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Deputy Speaker, the amendment board seeks to amend the act in order to ensure the proper implementation of legislation in respect of safety, security, and the investigation of aircraft, aircraft accidents and incidents in civil aviation. Now, the ACDP regrets that the previous provisions already in the 2009 Act, which provided for a similar establishment, were not implemented. And this is due to various reasons. Apparently, there were practical difficulties in establishing the entity and this meant that this was never achieved. However, we fully support the provisions of this bill, believing that better late than never. As the minister has indicated, South Africa has a proud history of commercial air safety, save for a number of light aircraft crashes referred to by members from the uh, portfolio committee. Let us just stop for a moment and remember the one exception was the tragic Helderberg air crash on the 27th of November, 1987, which resulted in the deaths of 159 passengers. And more than three decades later, families of the victims are still searching for answers about what started the fire in the cargo hold. And despite what various inquiries have found, Hopefully one day the truth will come out and give those families much needed closure. The ACDP believes that the provision now, which would include the role of inquests where families are involved, would help and would have helped in that situation. And we also support the role that Parliament will play in the appointment of the board members. I think that is very important as it will be to a large degree, an independent board. So despite that tragedy and despite a number of aircraft um, crashes that have taken place, we still have a proud history of aviation safety. And that is in no small part attributed to excellent training skills of our commercial pilots. And in that regard, the present industrial action between the SAA pilots the former business rescue practitioners and the Department of Public Enterprises is highly regrettable and the ACDP urges a speedy resolution to this issue. The country cannot afford to lose highly skilled pilots. And the same applies to aircraft maintenance. For example, the SAA technical, and we've seen the space now taken up by foreign companies such as Lufthansa Technik. We should learn from Airways, successful airways such as the Ethiopian Airways on how to operate a successful airline. To conclude, the ACDP would like to thank all the members of the Portfolio Committee for finalizing this bill, which we will support. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Swart. Uh, both of you, May and Swart, you kept your time. Thank you very much. Is ATM in the house or on the platform? No response, I assume they are not here. I proceed to the NFP, Honorable CBC. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. The National Freedom Party welcomes the Civil Aviation Amendment Bill 
we are on defense on some of the proposed amendments. We believe that government should listen more to the industry and business in the sector that have suffered devastating effects because of COVID-19. These businesses are not SAA, depending on government for bailouts when do not go well. Therefore, it is critical that we make laws that assist in the sustainability of businesses. After careful consideration of the proposed amendments, we support the proposal for Aviation Safety Investigation Board. However, the National Freedom Party is concerned about funding given the constrained fiscals. <clears throat> Therefore, it suffices to ask whether any funding allocation will be made available by the departments for the, for the establishment of the ASIP and how it will be structured. We cannot expect business in the sector to bear these costs when the sector was still recovering from the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. We have came across reports from the Airlines Association of South Africa, which expressed concerns about proposed amendments to the bill that would make civil aviation authority the preferential creditor when a business was liquidated, placed under business rescue or placed under administration. Airlines and other stakeholders had all suffered devastating losses due to COVID-19, making the Civil Aviation Authority the preferred creditor is giving it the upper hand over other creditors. What happens when the CAA is owed much less compared to other creditors? Some businesses have serious creditors with serious debts, which was essential to the running and operation of that business and actually preserve jobs. We have also come across reports from the Commercial Aviation Association of Southern Africa expressing concerns about the Civil Aviation Regulations Committee losing its present independence. We understand that the Regulations Committee in its current form was a model of cooperation between the public and private sectors. Therefore, we support the Commercial Aviation Association of Southern Africa to allow the committee to continue in its current form. We need to make laws that respond to the citizen needs, particularly in the territory of ERRP. We cannot be passing laws filled with regulations that pose as nothing but red tape for business to continue to survive in this harsh economic condition. What is the rationale behind the Civil Aviation Regulation Committee losing its independence? During public hearing, stakeholders spoke up strongly about independence of CAA, more importantly to avoid possible conflicts of interest. The need for independence had been underlined by the accident involving a CAA calculation aircraft in January 2021. Mr. Fanzel said that he had led an investigation into an accident in which he had to criticize the CAA who had contracted him as a consultant. Someone in his position might be reluctant to criticize the CAA. As the National Freedom Party would like to agree with Mr. Fanzel that the time has come for the establishment of a multi more than accident investigation authority that will be reporting to parliament and not to the CA or the Minister of Transport. It remains clear yes, that... Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, sir. Uh, the next uh, speaker is Honorable Kumalo of the ANC. Ntungwa. Nyabonga, Segala Somblom, Ongong Ocean, No Segala Nung Oshi, Amalung a parliament. The ANC supports this bill. The country's civil aviation industry is one of the most sophisticated in, of the, uh, on the African continent and functions on, on the best international practice. The amendments to the act through this amendment bill ensures that the civil aviation industry, in, industry is in South Africa functions within the international safety standards. The country's aviation industry has one of the finest track records for aviation safety in the world, and it is important that these high standards are maintained. Ensuring that countries' legislation and regulations is in line with the best international standards is a critical part of maintaining these standards. This Bill 6 establishment of the Civil Aviation Authority and the creation of safety and security structures that governs the function of the civil aviation industry. The economic importance of aviation as a mode, as a mode of transport cannot be overemphasized in the context of economic reconstruction and recovery plan. 
Segala some lomo as well, Vagasha, ten belly, a pulu glom teton, Jangoba Uzo, Banum Telela, Um Pulu, Wamatuba, Um Sedins. The bill seeks to amend the act to ensure the implementation of legislation in terms of safety, security, and, and investigation of aircraft incidents and aircraft accidents in the, in the regulations. The bill extends the power of the minister to issue regulations to implement a safety plan. It is imperative to ensure that safety and, sec and security in the civil aviation industry keeps abreast of international norms and standards going forward without requiring further legislation. In this regard, as Lomo, the bill seeks to create an independent aviation safety investigation board whose composition, role, and fun roles, functions, and regulations are transparently understood and outlined in the am amendment bill before this house. The bill also tightens the corporate governance function of the South Africa Civilization Avita Civil Aviation Authority, which means it is no longer required to develop a corporate governance. This bill also enables a performance agreement between the Minister of Transport and the Aviation Saf Safety a Investigation Board. The bill outlines in details the procedure appointment of the, the, pro the procedure of appointment of members to the aviation. To aviation safety board. The process for appointment in the, is transparent and even accountable to parliament as the minister needs to report to parliament within 30 days upon the appointment of the board. The process and procedure for enforcing safety and conducting investigation are defined in, de in details in the bill, which ensures that legislation is implementable. This amendment bill gives the minister powers to develop appropriate regulations on the basis of legislation to effect and implement the legislation on the functioning of the civil aviation industry, especially with regard to safety, security, as well as environment, environment protection. Critical in terms of implementation and legislation of, of, of the legislation is the fact that bill ensures linkage between the Department of Transport and the Civil Aviation Board through a member of the department sitting on the board. The hands-on approach of the, of the department will enable the, enable the department effectively and efficiently function in relation to civil aviation industry in the country. In conclusion, is that uh, in the information of legislation, the views and inputs of stakeholders considered and is reflected, and it is reflected in this finalized amendment bill before the house, stakeholders participated This bill should be supported and uh, as, the, as the legislation and regulation flow, flowing from this legislation serves the best interest of the civil aviation industry and is in accordance with the high standards of operation in this aviation industry. Thank you very much, Honorable Member. Let's go to what is AIC present in the house? It's not there. We proceed. PAC? It too is not present. Let's go to the DA. Honorable Deputy Speaker, thank you very much indeed. Honorable Deputy Speaker, the Democratic Alliance notes and welcomes the Civil Aviation Amendment Bill as discussed and deliberated upon by the Portfolio Committee on Transport, including various stakeholders in the aviation industry. The bill, as per the research notes received from the research unit, seeks to provide for the investigation of aircraft accidents as well as aircraft incidents, a responsibility that to date has been undertaken by the Aviation Incident Investigation Directory, which is attached to the South African Civil Authority, that is SACA. The bill seeks to establish the Aviation Safety Investigation Board, whose objectives are inter alia, the advancement of aviation transportation safety, and it's striving to conduct the independent investigations, including, when necessary, public inquiries into selected aircraft accidents and incident in order to make findings as to their cause and uh, contributory factors. Any efforts to allow the aviation industry or any other state owned enterprise to function independently is always a step in the right direction and will be welcomed by the Democratic Alliance. Honorable Deputy Speaker, 
While the bill is noted and welcomed by the DA, the budget implications that come with the bill should be noted. While the department indicated that the implementation of the bill will be within its budget allocation, the department is yet to state and make available the budget allocation that has been set aside for the implementation of the bill. Honorable Deputy Speaker, the independence of the board, we have seen over the years how boards have been made up of ANC cater deployed to boards which have led to the collapse of state-owned enterprises in the country. The Democratic Alliance will thus monitor the process of the establishment and the appointment of, of the board uh, to guard against cater development or cater deployment, whatever the correct terminology is in the ANC books these days. Honorable Deputy Speaker, Equally concerning is the fact that municipalities are made to look after small scale airstrips on an unfunded Monday. Noting the dismal collapse of ANC governed municipalities due to a number of factors, as noted by numerous independent research reports, such as Rating Africa Municipality and Financial Sustainability Index, it is not clear how these municipalities will then undertake such an imperative task in order to ascertain the maintenance of said airstrips. I thank you, Deputy Speaker. Uh, thank you, Honorable Member. You two and the other members stayed within your time. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Honorable Manu. Um, yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Deputy Speaker. Um, I will not make a mistake and say House Chair. Minister Trump. <laughs> Ministers, President, Chairperson of the Portfolio Committee, members of the Portfolio Committee, colleagues, fellow South Africans, good afternoon. As we start, um, I think it's also important that we note with shock the death, horrific crash that happened yesterday in KwaZulu Natal where seven innocent souls perished. We extend our heartfelt condolences to those families of those loved ones. And about 30 people were injured. And to them also we extend oh, our- Thank you, Chair. We extend our well wishes and wish them a speedy recovery. We call on the department and the Minister of Transport to get to the bottom of the cause of this crash, road crashes can be prevented. And we believe they can be prevented. And we call on the department to deal with this scourge on our roads. The ANC stands in support of this amendment of the Civil Aviation Amendment Bill as it has been presented. We also welcome and appreciate the support from all the opposition parties which fully participated in the debate in the portfolio committee. Barring one or two things that one doesn't know where they come from when we come to this platform, but we will deal with them time permitting. The country's civil aviation has already said operating the best international standards and has got a superb safety track record. And this, a bill seeks to reinforce exactly that. And the amendment bill before this house is geared to operationalize certain aspects of legislation and regulation that are critical for the maintenance and continuation of these international standards into the future. This bill uh, also makes sure that it puts aviation at the center of economic recovery in this country into the future. It is an economic enabler in the country. However, of major concern to the African National Congress, and we call upon the minister to look into this, is that industry remains the least transformed. It remains an elitist industry. And we are calling upon the minister and all of us to make sure that transformation happens in this industry. A lot of aspects that relate to this bill have been articulated by colleagues, save to say that it really recalibrates the current legislation and industry amongst them, 
there has been mention about the preferred creditor status. Unfortunately, Mr. Sibisi, who doesn't participate in the committee, raises issues here which were dealt with there because this preferred creditor status is people who are collecting money on behalf of SACA. It is not their money in the first place. So if the member was in the committee, that matter would never have arisen. Chapter four of the act also makes provision for the investigation that has been mentioned. Very, very critical is that the ANC led government is resolute to ensure proper governance. And the parameters and powers of the functioning of this board are highlighted here. We introduce in this draft bill elements of the Public Finance Management Act that have not been there before. As a demonstration of the resoluteness of this government to clean governance and transparency. So, Deputy uh, Speaker, we also welcome, as I said, unfortunately, Honorable uh, Swartz there uh, invokes issues of the Heidelberg, which I think are very unfortunate. Given. Uh, Honorable Chabangu, Mfoga um, Makosini. Thank you very much. You were left once, with a few seconds, Dati Mangu. Once more, we welcome the support of all the opposition parties and the ANC supports this bill. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable the Minister of Transport. You've got two minutes, sir. Go ahead. Yes, uh, Chair, we wish to thank the Portfolio Committee, members of the public, stakeholders in aviation and members of parliament uh, for their valuable input to this bill. As a country, we have distinguished ourselves in ensuring that public participation plays a pivotal role. The bill has been enriched through public participation. Deputy Speaker, the much needed vaccines were received through this mode of transport. Air ambulance become uh, of importance in saving lives, especially those who get involved in serious motor accidents. Um, the strengthening of the Aviation Safety Investigation Board and its independence bring the much needed independence and assures members of the public, uh, of the public that investigations are not just independent but are seen to be independent. We welcome the political parties that have supported this bill to ensure safety of the allies. We are on track uh, in terms of uh, transforming and ensuring that we bring about necessary legislation. That includes also the matters that will come before us in no time with regard to transformation. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Speaker. Thank you very much, Minister. Uh, honorable members, that concludes the debate. Are there any objections to the bill being read a second time? No objections agreed to. Uh, the secretary will read the bill a second time. Civil Aviation Amendment Bill. Uh, the bill will be sent to the National Council of Provinces for concurrence. The next item on the order paper is a debate on an urgent matter of national public importance in terms of Rule 130 in the name of uh, Mr. A.G. Whitfield on the unfolding DNA crisis uh, in the South African police services. Uh, I now recognize the Honorable Whitfield Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker. In 2013, this House passed the DNA Bill, and in 2014, it was assented to by the President. This historic act paved the way for the expansion of the National Forensic DNA Database and improved regulation in the field of DNA forensics. Most notably, 
This act made it possible to compel violent Schedule 8 offenders to submit their DNA profiles to the database oh, no. so as to establish any past or future crimes. In 2016, a gentleman by the name of Sikangele Mki was arrested for assault with intent to do grievous bodily harm. His arrest and subsequent sentencing in 2017 triggered a DNA test in terms of the act, and his profile as a convicted offender was loaded onto the National Forensic DNA Database, thereby linking him key to 30 counts of rape, 27 counts of kidnapping, and 12 counts of robbery with aggravating circumstances. Mkee, seemingly a first-time offender who was set to serve a five-year suspended sentence, was ultimately sentenced to 15 life terms and an additional 120 years in prison because of the work done by this house and countless others in civil society in bringing the DNA Act to life. Mkee was exposed for the violent criminal he is because the DNA Act required that the National Commissioner of Police must, together with the National Commissioner of correctional services, ensure that a buckle sample is taken within two years of any person serving a sentence of imprisonment for a Schedule 8 offence. Regrettably, this transitional provision in the Act expired in 2017, and the state could therefore no longer compel violent Schedule 8 offenders to submit their DNA profiles. An amendment bill was drafted to correct this issue, but has been ignored by Cabinet since 2017. In 2019, I asked the Civilian Secretariat for Police what the number was of convicted Schedule 8 offenders who had not yet submitted their DNA profiles as a consequence of the delay in processing the amendment bill. I was told it was more than 47,000. More than 47,000 violent criminals who could potentially be linked to multiple other crimes, thereby incurring harsher sentences, may well be released after serving their sentence without ever having their DNA sampled because a simple amendment to the DNA Act has been gathering dust in cabinet since 2017. The reason given to parliament for this unfathomable delay is that the Minister of Police, together with the Minister of Home Affairs, are exploring the possibility of creating a national DNA database which would require every single South African citizen to submit their DNA profile to the state. This delusional DNA dystopia in which the minister lives, besides being completely unaffordable, would be entirely unconstitutional and is certainly no reason to delay a critically important amendment bill, which is now four years overdue. Now, this debate today is not about politics, but it is about executive accountability. And because the minister has failed so spectacularly to resolve the crisis over which he has presided, the buck today must stop with the president. Fundamentally, though, this is a debate about justice and why the failure to take forensic sciences seriously has led to a miscarriage of justice for thousands of victims of some of the most violent and heinous crimes in our country. It is about ensuring that there are consequences for violent criminals and that they are not put back on our streets to rape and murder with impunity. This debate today is about five-year-old Chantal Mokwena from Rocklands in Nelson Mandela Bay who in 2019 was brutally raped and killed by a man out on bail for rape. Chantal Mokwena was raped and killed on the 1st of August, and six weeks later, there had been no arrest. In an act of violent desperation, Chantal's mother, with the help of the community, fought the alleged perpetrator, cut off his penis, and put it in his mouth. Chantal's mother was swiftly arrested, imprisoned, and separated from her breastfeeding infant. After more than two years, Chantal Mokwena's DNA samples have still not been analyzed due to the lack of consumables. Since Minister Taylor has been the Minister of Police from February 2018, appointed by President Ramaphosa, he has presided over an explosion in the backlog of DNA case exhibits from just over 7,000 in 2017-18 to over 225,000 this year. That is nearly a quarter of a million, a more than 3,000% increase in the backlog under his watch. It has never been this bad before. In January and February this year, not a single DNA sample was processed due to the lack of consumables. In response to this alarming fact, the minister said, no one has reported it before, and one only heard of it by chance. This is proof that the minister does not take the DNA crisis seriously, 
and is paying lip service to the president's commitment to halve violent crime in his term of office. Critical vacancies in the SAP's forensics division as a result of the internecine battle between the minister and the national commissioner, combined with catastrophic contract mis mismanagement, has led to a backlog which is now completely out of control. Thanks to the work done by the Portfolio Committee in Parliament in highlighting these issues, we are starting to see a faint flickering light at the end of a very, very dark and long tunnel. The reality though is that even if every vacancy is filled and every contract is awarded, the backlog will not be addressed within a year because every single day, more and more case exhibits arrive at our laboratories. In order to address the backlog and restore the integrity of our forensic capability, we have to do the following with urgency. The president must instruct the minister to bring the DNA amendment bill to parliament immediately so we can do our work. SAPs must ensure that all vacancies are filled with urgency and that all outstanding contracts are expedited. SAPS now needs to partner urgently with the private sector and our university laboratories to address the DNA backlog by the end of this year. To ensure that this crisis never happens again, SAPS needs to guarantee more transparency for victims and the public at large to be able to monitor the progress of their cases on a live DNA dashboard. The DNA backlog was a completely avoidable crisis if sufficient care and attention was paid to this issue when I first raised it in 2019. Mr. President, you have ignored my letters, you have ignored the cries of victims of violent crime like Chantal Mokwena, and you have ignored the failure of your minister to prevent the situation. Mr. President, you are complicit in this unprecedented crisis. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Tina Jumat Peterson. Is there any haze? Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Deputy Speaker, Honorable right. Minister, leave members. Um, thank you very much, Honorable Deputy Speaker. Fighting crime in South Africa requires all of us in government, in parliament and in our communities to do our part to make South Africa safer. It does not fall on us today to howl from opposition for a benches because this is a serious matter. We require a workable partnership in order to make sure that criminals are prevented from committing crime in the first place. Where do we commit crime? Where do they commit crime? We must be sure that they will be traced and there will be consequences for their actions. That requires that the South African police services and other government departments in the criminal justice system must play its part and fulfill their obligations to the South African public. The ANC has led efforts to create safer spaces for women and children in our country by leading the fight against gender-based violence and femicide and by leading our fight against crime. Now, honorable members, this debate has come at the right time, but this debate has also come very late for the honorable Whitfield because as he said, we started addressing this matter in 2019 already. When the SAP Forensic Service was undertaking a turnaround strategy to address the backlog in DNA processing, it was a collective achievement of the Portfolio Committee led by the ANC, who addressed this matter, who worked in partnership, and we wish to thank the Honorable Member Whitfield for the role he played. He was not the only political partner party, he was part of a collective. The problem is that he doesn't understand the role which was played by the Freedom Front Plus, by the IFP, and we actually had, for well, once we had a partnership, was even the EFF to solve this matter. The debate is an opportune moment to highlight the role we played through our oversight role on the challenges of backlogging DNA processing with the steps with the minister, with the national commissioner, and how we highlighted significant interventions which were, uh, which were required 
and how the minister and the national commissioner worked with the portfolio committee to address and reverse the problems which we had. So this debate is quite late. Why? Last week, the president already answered to a question by the honorable and we, uh, honorable Dr. Grunewald. He was on time. Honorable Woodfield, you are late. Your debate is stale already. But the really problematic is when we start using GBV and femicide, when you start using gender-based gender violence and femicide for political point scoring, that is reprehensible. It should, it should be condemned with the contempt it deserves. It should be aside and it should be condemned as the secondary victimization of survivors of gender-based violence. Let us not come into this house to score political points. This is a political opportunism of the worst kind and should be rejected by all members of political parties, including all members of this house. It is totally abhorrent behavior. I would like us to look at this matter with the um, multi-party women's caucus to see how we can explain why gender-based violence is abused in debates when in fact we are looking at justice for all, even those who are victims of violent crime. Honorable uh, Deputy Speaker, the forensic science laboratories in our, in our country have been modernized and have sophisticated equipment to process its DNA samples in line with the provision of the Criminal Law Forensic Procedures Act. The Police Committee on Portfolio, uh, Police uh, Portfolio Committee held three hearings on the effectiveness of processing backlogs DNA samples at the forensic science laboratories. Furthermore, this weekend on Saturday, we shall be conducting an oversight visit at the forensic science laboratories. We know that the COVID-19 pandemic has not been kind to our service delivery in all our government departments. Our budgets have been cut, but honorable deputy speaker with the dwindling budget, the steps have because of our reprioritization, they have used an operational budget reprioritized and increase this budget for forensic science laboratories by 250 million rand. The Honorable President says this. So why do you want to keep the Honorable President responsible for a matter which you have assisted us in solving? There is something really wrong in the thought process of someone who assists in solving matter, but then continues to insist that there is a crisis. We are not saying that there is no crisis. We are saying we are attending to it, we are addressing it, and we thank the Honorable Whitfield for assisting us in doing this. Yes, thank you. But he doesn't realize that he's actually been successful in the very own work he has done. And I suppose that is because he always needs to be led, and he always needs to be led by the African National Congress. Honorable members, we were concerned about consumables, chemicals, quantification kits. We were concerned about equipment required to keep the forensic science laboratories operational. We were concerned in the face of dwindling budgets, we were first to notice it and bring it to the attention of SAPS as part of our monitoring mandate. We have held these hearings because it is part of our oversight responsibility. We heard about the backlog totaling 172,787 cases. Yes, but we are eating this and eating bit by bit. He speaks about the private sector. Honorable Whitfield, we are already partnering with the private sector. The Honorable President said this. The Honorable President has established a focus area to have a, to a monitor, if it's called a technical advisory committee, have been established for benchmarking and piloting of new modern and specialized forensic equipment. New methods to meet international standards and current priority is focused on mobile DNA laboratory capacity, a research 
and feasibility study are being conducted. Honorable Woodfield, please come physically to the House so that when the President uh, 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 responds to questions, you know something is happening when you are linking to the President's responses technically. I think you should come to the House, you should listen, you should be focused, and you should acknowledge your own role and the role of your party in assisting us in solving this problem. For once, we could work as a collective. So don't come to the House and say that we have not solved the problem. When you work Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Chirwa. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Greetings to the CIC of the EFF, Julia Sello Malema, the Deputy President and Chief Whip in Parliament, Commissar Floyd Nyekoshe Vambo, all the officials, commissars, and ground forces of the EFF. Early this year, the EFF raised an issue of the crisis of DNA kits in police stations across the country. And true to the Minister's habitual pattern to prioritize PR over the extra work you are meant to but fail to do, you are quick to say we were lying, knowing very well the harrowing stories of children as young as three years old being subjected to seeing their rapists roaming the streets because you do not process DNA rape evidence kits. Children, women, and the LGBTQI who suffer gruesome crimes at the hands of treacherous men must today acknowledge that they are rapists more than 100,000 of them multiplying each year are not behind bars because the government of the day is hoarding evidence of their rapes in the fridge and will continue to do so for years to come. Rapists and sexual violence perpetrators in this country will continue to terrorize marginalized people because they find confidence in that no matter how many times they rape, no matter how many people they kill, no matter how many times they terrorize people, their genital and body fluids and the evidence that they leave on their victims' bodies, which are living crime scenes, will rot in the hands of the state. Rapists in South Africa rest their confidence in the South African police service as a dependable ally that will misplace evidence, lose evidence, not process evidence, or simply not collect it at all. Year in and year out, even to the admittance of Minister Ronald Lamola on the 19th of March, 2021, in his response to a written question, states that there are cases that are being struck off the roll by the court due to outstanding DNA evidence. Where then must children who make up 40% of rape victims go to if the SAPS will not even process the evidence these children carry to your police stations uh, after being raped and molested, if the forensic laboratory services will not even process it in the interest of their justice. Why do you continue to tell rape victims to not bath and to carry evidence on their bodies to come and report rape cases to you as early as possible if you will store the evidence for years on end, leaving rapists to go about their lives while the lives of rape survivors come to an end, waiting and chasing a justice that will never happen because you refuse to process rape kids. Rapists in South Africa depend on the ANC government to continue raping and getting away with it. That is a fact. Now, to move on from this, find rape testing, kitting, uh, rape testing kits with urgency. Establish a capacitated and cutting-edge rape and DNA database system. The women and children and the LGBTIQ of this country are desperate for an SAPS that will treat rape and sexual violence crimes with the urgency that they truly deserve. Ensure that it is a standard procedure to process fingerprints and rape DNA database vetting for each and every public servant existing currently and entering a state personnel. For all we know, some of these rape kit evidence uh, kits will point right in our benches in this very house, in legislatures, in councils, and in municipalities. 
results an innovative technological project that will amalgamate the Home Affairs fingerprint collection system with that of the SAPS for speedy tracking of criminals. Enforce the entire process of manufacturing rape kits, delivering them to police stations, storing them, and processing rape ev ev evidence in less than a week, Minister. We have not done this because you are not committed to justice for rape victims in the country. You are committed to tender systems that will expand the opportunities for your comrades behind the door uh, payments while flooding rape victims with the rhetoric of how passionate you are about fighting the rape crisis when the issue of backlogs of evidence can be resolved by processing it to speed up conviction. And you are not doing that. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker. Uh, the next speaker is Honorable Majosi. Honorable Deputy Speaker, uh, this is uh, IFP Chief of Singh. Honorable Majosi is having some connection problems, so may I continue with reading her remarks? That's the rule. Go ahead, sir. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker. According to the most recent data given to the Portfolio Committee on Police, the national backlog of forensic cases currently stands at 172,000. These are cases that involve DNA samples. This is a devastating miscarriage of justice for over 150,000 people living in South Africa who are unable to have their cases hear, heard or concluded due to this appalling delay. The South African Police Services Forensic Division has, because of mismanagement and poor leadership, failed to adequately resource and support the National Forensic Science Laboratories to ensure that DNA cases exhibits are processed with the urgency they deserve. We have been briefed on the continuing lack of basic consumables and the failure to properly maintain highly sensitive equipment, which stretches back over more than two years. A key area of concern is that thousands of these delays are linked to rape and murder cases across the country. In a country with an ever increasing rate of gender-based violence and an astronomically high crime rate in general, this delay means that there are murderers and rapists, among others, roaming our communities and terrorizing our citizens with impunity. They operate without consequence because of this failure to ensure that our justice system is adequately supported and resourced. This delay has no doubt contributed to the mistrust our citizens have in the SAPS. Poor resolution of such violent crimes leads to distrust. Deputy Speaker, the IP welcomes the appointment of the new National Forensics and Ethics Board and trusts that despite the board inheriting this immense backlog and other issues, that the members will learn from the failings of the predecessors. The IFP also trusts that the plan of action that has been outlined will indeed yield immediate and impactful results in the following areas amongst others. Reduction of DNA casework backlog, especially for GBB cases, the establishment of forensic investigative units across the country so as to ease the burden on the existing infrastructure, the modernization and maintenance of forensic equipment and methods, the appointment of adequate staff to meet increasing demands for forensic products, the full accreditation of all laboratories to conduct DNA analysis, and the monitoring of the utilization and impact of forensic products in the investigation of crime and court impact. Finally, uh, Deputy Speaker, the IFP demands, together with all South Africans, more transparency and accountability regarding this critical link between our justice system and our citizens. I thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, the next speaker is Honorable Khrunewal. Thank you, Honorable Deputy Speaker. We must start to say that we must look at the statistics to realize the real effect of the problem when it comes to DNA tests. In an official question to the Honorable President, you officially replied that by the 25th of February this year, the backlog on DNA tests were 172,787 cases. Now we have to deal with that. The Honorable uh, Minister is here and he will respond by the end of this debate. Maybe Honorable Minister, you should inform the people of South Africa 
what the backlog is at present. So the backlog is one issue, but it is because of, as far as I'm concerned, because of two reasons, main reasons. The one is the fact that the Honorable Minister also admitted at the Portfolio Committee at the beginning of March that there are no consumables available to all the forensic laboratories of the police. That's totally unacceptable. How can you get into a situation where no consumables are available? And the minister didn't even know about it. The second issue, whether we like it or not, is about the management system, the electronic management system of DNA system. And honorable deputy speaker, I still don't understand how it came to a situation where a company, forensics data analysts, just stopped their systems by June last year, where the whole system actually came to a standstill. And I'm not here to lobby for any company. I'm here to say that we must act in the best interest of South Africa. What happened? That was because of court cases, nine of them, about intellectual property of FDA. The police have lost all the cases. The last one, a constitutional court case that determined, yes, FDA do have the intellectual property owner of the system. Now we said that we're going to have a new system. CETA is, came forward and now they said, yes, from the 6th of April, everything is running well. Honorable Minister, I must inform you this afternoon that FDA has laid a new application to come forward to say that the intellectual property is still misused by CETA in the system. So by next week, I foresee that there's going to be an interdict preventing to use the system. So everything is back to square one. Honorable Minister and what the Honorable Chair of the Portfolio Committee said, we have to solve the problems. As far as I'm concerned, the one problem is that the difference between the Honorable Minister and the National Commissioner for Police must be solved. We cannot go back to a situation where we, since 2000, had political appointments as National Commissioners. General Titori is an experienced police officer who came through the ranks with 35 years of experience in the police. We have to solve that. And I also want to say to the Honorable President, he said that opposition parties should not get involved in internal matters of the ANC. He's correct. The Freedom, of Freedom Front Plus don't want to get involved. But what I want to say to the Honorable President, sort your differences and your factionalism, sort it out so that you can start focus on the problems of South Africa and not on party political Thank you. issues. Thank you, Honorable Member. We now call on Honorable uh, K.R.J. Mishwe. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. In December last year, there was a <laughs> backlog of almost 120,000 samples at the National Forensic Science Laboratory. Sub spokesperson Brigadier Vish Naidu stated that 60 to 70% of the unprocessed samples were for rape cases and most of the rest for murders. By March 2021, the DNA backlog had increased to 172,000, which is totally unacceptable. The ACDP believes that these backlogs at our forensic laboratories are empowering the murderers and rapists of South Africa, while destroying the lives of tens of thousands of suffering families. Murder victims cannot speak for themselves. They need a voice, and that voice is DNA results. Traumatized, mentally challenged, and child rape victims may not even go to court if they do not have a friend to accompany them. And their best friend, in this case, to win their case, is DNA results. DNA results help identify perpetrators, they help convict perpetrators, and they help to deter potential or repeat offenders. 
According to NPA spokesperson Sipongwema, DNA results are essential specifically in those cases where identity is in dispute and no other corroborative witnesses are available. Furthermore, the DNA backlog gives perpetrators the freedom to new targets for their aggression. In Durban, a serial rapist was given only five years suspended sentence for grievous bodily harm. This was before DNA processing and matching was done. After DNA processing was done, the forensic laboratory results spoke for his 30 rape victims, nine of whom were under 16 and one only 11 years old. Because of the DNA results, a new sentence of 120 years was handed down. According to former deputy chair of the National Forensic Oversight and Ethics Board, Vanessa Lynch, rape kits would be, should be processed in 30 days. The ACDP agrees with her statement that the backlog is a travesty of justice as every sexual assault kit which lies in the forensic science laboratory which has not been analyzed is effectively someone's life being put on hold and worse still fails to identify the perpetrators who are no doubt still at large raping again, again, and again. This miscarriage of justice, Deputy Speaker, must be addressed urgently. All vacancies must be filled without delay and consumables must be made available at all forensic laboratories. Furthermore, Thank you, sir. No Your time has expired. Thank you very thank much. You, uh, thank you. Uh, Honorable Kwangpa. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Speaker and all members. The, the unfolding DNA crisis at SUBS is yet another indication that not all is not well at the South African Police Services. So according to reports, SUBS backlog of DNA tests approached a staggering 200, almost 200,000 over the past couple of months due to primarily the bitter battle between SUBS, CITA, and FDA to stop their systems. This has crippled <coughs> SUBS sub crime fighting capacity and has had an enormous impact, especially on the rape and gender-based violence cases in South Africa. Recent reports also paint a very gloomy picture that due to this uh, fight between SABS and FDA, about approximately 8 million pieces of evidence, including DNA's, DNA samples may have been lost. Unfortunately, this results in a situation where criminals run rampage and scot free whilst victims live in fear. This also regrettably occurs in a context of a South Africa where thousands of women are raped every day and thousands of people are also raped on, a, um, on an average over a period of time. This requires political will on the part of the ministry and government to address and deal with this unfolding crisis as failure to do so is irresponsible. We must understand that there is a chain of events happening from the time a victim reports an, an incident at the police station until ev DNA evidence can be presented to court. If the system is not in place, it exposes the chain and jeopardizes the credibility of the evidence and also negatively impacts the entire justice system. But more so, what is also regrettable about this impact is that thousands of rape and gender-based violence cases will never see the light of day in court and justice may never be served. And victims will always be reminded of how the law enforcement agency and the justice system, which we have set up to protect them, has failed them dismally. We call on the minister and the department and government to address these issues with immediate effect. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. Is the ATM here? No. Let's call Honorable Faku. Uh, yeah. Honorable Deputy Speaker, Honorable Minister of Police, Honorable Deputy Minister of Police, Honorable Members, I have listened closely to my Honorable colleagues. 
and no one can deny the critical role that the DNA analysis play in fighting crime and the vital link thereof in the criminal justice system value chain. No one can deny there has been some challenges that led to the backlog in DNA analysis. However, it is also clear that the police has recognized this and they are not shying away from these challenges, but they are tackling the backlog head on to address the situation with speed and dedication. I just want to confirm to Honorable, sorry, to Honorable Whitfield that the minister has not failed. If you were participating of late to the portfolio committee meetings, uh, you would understand for some time now you've been absent. Uh, the minister has not failed. We have full confidence in the minister. As you listen to what I'll be saying, you will really understand the work that has been done thus far. Um, Honorable Deputy Speaker, a critical area in enhancing analysis of DA, DNA analysis lies in capacitating of provincial forensic services. The South African police has four forensic laboratories, of which only two are performing both evidence recovery and DNA analysis. The laboratories in KZN and the Eastern Cape are only doing evidence recovery. However, this will be addressed through the DNA turnaround strategy that was implemented by SABS. The forensic services function is currently performed and accounted for at a national level. Thus, no budget allocation is made to relevant provincial commis commissioners. The police could possibly consider the decentralization of some of the responsibilities to the provincial level to improve accountability to provincial commi commissioners in the provinces where the DNA analysis laboratories are located. Ideally, all nine provinces should have forensic DNA in laboratories, but the current economic outlook and the financial constraints made this ideal situation difficult, if not impossible. Honorable Deputy Speaker, the, the Minister of Police has made no secret of the fact of shortage of virus consumables for DNA analysis and the delays in awarding tenders are to be blamed for the current backlog at the forensic laboratories. The corporate renewal strategy focuses on optimization of the financial and supply chain management process to support the provision of the forensic services, including the procurement of consumables and semi-automated DNA analysis system. There are specific shortages in consumables to complete the DNA analysis and specific consumables related to the kits. Shortages are specific to qualification kits, amplification kits, direct amplification kits for the DNA analysis samples. Various standards are currently being concluded to ensure the availability of, the cons of these consumables. Last month, the South African Police Services concluded two crucial, sorry, concluded crucial two-year contract with a specific service provider to supply specific co consumables. I'm not sure when Dr. Grunewald raises the issue of this previous service provider, where are you getting that information? As an honorable member, you're supposed to stand up and support the minister in the portfolio committee and not have conversation when people are going out and speaking to different service providers. Why do you want to see the, uh, the South African police services fail? It is because of the injustice of the past that you have created in your party. However, as the South African police services explained previously, before the qualification of kids can be procured, the validation of kids is being done and it's vital to ensure these are valid for the process. It is expected that the process will be concluded in the next two months. SAMS has use quotation system to procure sufficient number of qualification kits to be used over the next three months up until the validation process is completed. Honorable Speaker, we cannot deny the significant impact that the coronavirus pandemic and the subsequent lockdown restriction had on all sectors in South Africa, and it did not spare SARS, especially in terms of procurement. Certain consumables are procured from overseas suppliers, Honorable Wilfield, which was hampered by the restriction on economic activities. Further there too, awarding of tender is reliant on different factors like site visit, potential bidders which could not be conducted during the strict levels of lockdown. Currently, the 
South African Police Services has increased the workforce for forensic analysis to provide sufficient overtime. The South African government is committed in capacitating uh, forensic services in the fight against gender-based violence. Hence, 250 million was set aside to address the DNA backlog. We have witnessed the impact of a current intervention where investigations are continuing. Just recently, a week ago, a serial rapist from in, uh, was arrested in Ekuruleng and he was linked to about 60, 60 cases of rape. And further, it is alleged that it could be linked to almost 100 rape cases. And that proves the commitment of the Minister of Police uh, in fighting against uh, gender-based violence and violence. It is estimated that the number of cases dealt with within a week has improved and there is work done in the forensic services at a faster pace. We must commend the South African police services for the work they have done thus far, irrespective of the current challenges we are facing as a nation. And it is so members to want to gain political scores because you are speaking about this matter this time. Honorable Chiwara, I wish that we could use this energy that you have when we go as the women of this country, when we go to victims and try to support them, you have so much energy, you must contact me. I will help you. Honorable Deputy Speaker, the procurement of manual and semi-automatic DNA processes are crucial. And the current tender to procure the semi-automatic system is at an advanced stage. The tender specification is detailed to provide performance qualification, training and maintenance plan. This will ensure the transfers of skills and building capacity in the Forensic Science Laboratory Division of Police. The procurement of automatic process system for the Gbebeha Laboratory, I hope that Minister Ngababanga is, is listening when I say Gbebeha. Laboratory will assist the police to cope with ever increasing demand of forensic DNA analysis capacity. The system will minimize analysis time as well as cost and human error. Honorable Speaker, in conclusion, I want to urge the Minister and his team to address the critical ex the challenges experienced in the supply chain management and contract man management division of police. This division have such great responsibility in securing the tools of trade to enable men and women in blue to perform their duties effectively. If supply chain management fails, they fail too. I have unwavering confidence in the police to eliminate the backlog speedily and to further prevent such situation from reoccurring. Thank you. Thank you. About the deputy, Honorable Terblanche. From world pioneer to total incompetence. Yes, Deputy Speaker, Honorable Members and fellow South Africans. This is exactly what happened to the South African Police Service in the field of DNA analysis. The Engineering News and Mining Weekly reported in an article dated 20 October 2006, the world's first fully automated system for high volume forensic DNA analysis and profiling went live in Acadia, Tswane, South Africa in August 2006 putting the biology unit of the SAPS Forensic Science Laboratory at the forefront of global DNA analysis technology. It further states, as the world's first fully automated system by which blood or other biological samples can be processed for DNA analysis, the facility is expected to support the efforts of both the police service and the criminal justice system. The turnaround time for forensic results based on DNA analysis was cut from 10 weeks to only one week. This achievement was so significant that even the FBI visited South Africa in 2006. At the time, it was expected that the system would have been replicated in several, several other countries around the world. My colleague, the Achbare Andrew Whitfield, had read for a deal with the getallen ter sprake in the implications that this tot gevolg het. A DNA profile is like a genetic fingerprint. Every person has a unique DNA profile, making it useful for identifying people involved in crime. It can be used by scientists to identify criminals 
or determine parentage. DNA evidence is a useful and neutral tool in the search for justice. It will play an increasingly important role in serving crimes in future. The result will be better justice for victims and safer communities. South Africa gaan thans gebuk onder a geweldige vlag van ernstige misdaad, soos byvoorbeeld moord, verkrachting, aanranding, misdaad in vrouwen en kinders, plaasmoorde, dwellen in bende verwante misdaden, en so meer. We were the world leaders in respect of this much needed competency, but lost our competitive edge to the extent that many victims of these horrendous crimes are denied justice. Our citizens are robbed of their constitutional right to safety. The huge backlog gives, gives true meaning to the term justice delayed is just denied. Voorzitter, Deputy Speaker, sorry, die vraag dan is, wat het verkeerd gegaan? What went wrong? Die kort antwoord is, een, swak leiderskap, twee, corruptie, drie, kaderontplooiing en onbevoegdheid, die coronavirus en die bestuur daarvan. The police were involved in ongoing discussions in several court battles with the owner of the forensic data analysis, FDI, who switched the PCEM system off in June 2020. This and other contracts were further adversely influenced by alleged corruption. Eric Fiasco had afgespeeld terwijl die betrokken twee hoogst betaalde heren reeds in beheer was. Die bestuur van die politiedienst was aan hulle toevertrouw. Ons weet vandag dat beide een groot rol gespeeld het in hierdie mens gemaakte tragedie en dat hulle Zuid-Afrika jammerlik geval het. While General Sitoli's dedication was unmatched pursuing the procurement of the grabber device, the renewal of the DNA contract did unfortunately not enjoy the same commitment. Minister Seller still enjoys the role of super national commissioner and South Africa's number one beach patroller. At the moment, they are in a fierce battle for control of the police. It's time to decide who must go, Mr. President. Who will it be? Celio Satole, or maybe both. Um, uh, honorable members, uh, I'm going to ask uh, Honorable BC to come in. But I'd like to say to Honorable Tara Blanche, I'm going to look at his remarks and I would like to communicate to him about those remarks. Honorable CBC from the NFP. Thank you, Deputy Honorable Speaker. There is no doubt that this is an important debate because it brings to light and to the attention of the majority of South Africans the issue of the DNA crisis at the South African police services. Uh, Deputy Speaker, this matter stretches back to more than two years. Thus, it has led to devastating delays in processing DNA samples linked to a significant number of murderers and rapes across, across the country. On the one hand, the president has put out a system message on the government's commitment to fight against crime, GPVF, amongst others. But on the other hand, we have a dysfunctional national forensic science laboratories. This is utterly counterproductive, uh, Deputy Speaker. <clears throat> Therefore, we would like to suggest that a thorough analysis of this backlog must be conducted to ascertain the extent of the impact on the backlog of DNA cases and the outcome of those cases. This is a direct indictment on the Minister of Police. <clears throat> I'm sorry. In response to this backlog, last month, the Minister said the statement, the State Information Technology Agency's new digital system is able to trace seven to 8,000 samples a week, adding that the new system helps in bringing the perpetrators of crime to book. The minister has not yet assured the country about whether the backlog has actually been addressed without compromising the quality of these cases that were largely dependent on those DNA results to be processed on time. All the minister said is that the heads are wrong. We cannot take lightly that the backlog has slapped us with more than 200,000 DNA uh, cases exhibits. 
families of rape survivors raised concern of the backlogs, saying the snail pace in the processing of DNA evidence sample is preventing justice from taking its course. South Africans have lamented, Deputy Speaker, about the continued denied justice that they to experience as a result of this issue. We, as the National Freedom Party, stand in solidarity with those families and victims who have been denied justice because of incapacity of personnel, lack of basic consumables, and contract misman mismanagement in the institutions that are the custodians of the DNA processes. I thank you, Deputy Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Member. Um, I guess AIC is still not here. PAC. Let's go Proceed. to Al Jama. Uh, Proceed, Deputy Speaker. Sorry? I'm here, but I'm not speaking. Oh, okay. PAC. All right. yes. That's PAC. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, Dr. Sharp. Thanks. Uh, Al Jama. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Deputy Speaker. Honorable Deputy Speaker, the backlog on DNA testing is going to grow. And I'm very concerned about the provision in the green paper of the Marriage Act, where women are allowed to take more than one husband. So you can imagine when a child is born, more DNA tests will be needed to determine who the father is. So uh, the problem is only going to get worse, but I'm very confident that the Minister of Police will fast track the problems we are facing with DNA testing. Uh, we need to reduce the reliance on DNA testing. And one of the areas al has identified is the over 5,000 bodies that are lying on ice our African brothers lying on ice because they were undocumented and their bodies can't be released because there's a need for, for DNA testing. We went to the high court to assist a Tanzanian who jumped in the river to save a young girl and he was lying on ice for three months. And the judge told me, Honorable Hendricks, what is a member of parliament doing in my court? You should be in Parliament changing your legislation to sort this out. And that is precisely what Al Jama wants to do. And we hope we can count on the Minister of Police for his assistance because he's meant to help us uh, win that particular uh, case. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Deputy uh, Speaker. Thank you, sir. Uh, Honorable uh, Mapatre. Okay. Sorry, Deputy Speaker. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, it's Honorable. Uh, yeah, what are you raising on, Honorable uh, Mazzoni? Deputy Speaker, I'm afraid I have to interrupt proceedings because I would like you to refer what the um, last speaker, who I will not refer to as Honorable, has just said and how insulting he has been to every woman in this country regarding uh, the rights of women to have multiple husbands, but uh, the, 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 the rights of men to have multiple wives. I think that in this day and age, in the, in the year 2021, to think that a public representative of this country would dare stand up in the parliament of South Africa and say something like that is an absolute disgrace. I want to refer to the ethics committee as well as the rules committee of parliament and may I say that the only woman in this country who would possibly feel that way is his wife. Honorable, Honorable uh, Mazzoni, we will examine that. But I do wish to say to you, even when you are outraged, your language must be careful as well. You need not cross boundaries because you are outraged by what someone said. We will look at uh, what the honorable member said and uh, we'll report back to the house. Honorable Mapache, please go ahead. Thank you, uh, uh, on, uh, Deputy Speaker. Uh, this issue that we are discussing today, it is of national importance. And we said in our committee that we must not politicize issues that affect our people, especially the gender-based violence. 
and we all agreed in those meetings. But this challenge of the, the backlog, it does not start now. And all of them, they agree that it does not start now. But with the sixth administration, when we came in, we prioritized this issue that it must be prioritized and we played our oversight role correctly. And time and again, we have been calling uh, the department to come and, and account. And I must say that the minister and the deputy minister has been playing that important role, including the commissioner, briefing the, com the, 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 the portfolio committee about what is happening. Now, what they are not telling the, 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 the people and honorable members, the truth is that there were challenges and when we, we identified those challenges, we then asked them to give us a regular report. And these are the things that they have identified which uh, created the backlog. The one is that the problem, it was uh, characterized by corruption, which featured across forensic supply chain and technology management service, which the department acted upon through arrest, dismissal, and a series of internal investigations. The above described, situ uh, described situation led to mismanagement in the contract management environment in which most contracts expired without renewal, either because of court challenges, omissions, or lack of capacity. This included contracts for consumables, which then halted the processing of DNA, creating the backlog. The capacity lost through resignations, arrest and dismissals emanating from the actions taken, taken impacted negatively on the staff complements and has worsened the backlog. This included displacements displacement of scientists, analysts who left the environment either because of promotion or other form of uh, mobility. So with the relationship uh, between the DNA backlog and the FDA, which Honorable uh, Hrunewald uh, referred to. It was that the DNA processing is a scientific process which take place within, a, within and handled by forensic labor, laboratories. The, 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 the FDA that is, spoke, is, 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 is speaking to Honorable Hrunewald, it was the one that was providing uh, the exhibit tracking and trace system which is called PCE, PCEM, which assisted with the tracking and, tr and, and tracing in all exhibits. It is important to mention that the PCM system or any other FDA related system did not have any direct impact on the DNA backlog nor assisting DNA. There was a process, uh, uh, Deputy Speaker, that unfolded, which was that it's either when the contract came to an end with the FDA, that they wanted the department to buy all their systems. And the department said, no, we cannot buy all your systems. You only need one system. In that process, again, the companies, there are companies who came, who claimed the IP. And we're very shocked to say that that means our sovereignty is at risk because the data that they take, it might go to other countries which we will use it against us, against us. But we developed then an, an action-oriented solution, which execu was executed by the department. One is in responding for corruption, both former divisional commissioners of the three environments were charged criminally and departmentally with two dismissed. More than 60 arrests effected across three environments with supply chain accounting for more than 40. A series of Section 81 investigations initiated to recover from those who use res resignation to escape. The corporate renewal strategies designed and implemented at all three divisions with management overall. The new divisional commissioner appointed at supply chain and forensic with the technology manage management sev uh, services is still in the, the process. Deputy Speaker, in reorganizing and restructuring in progress 
at all three environments, which included the re recapac recapacitation of the environments. It's one, the co contract management strategy introduced in the organization through the turn around vision. The contract management committee appointed consisting of senior members. Contract with forensic re revived and renewed, including those consumables. Contract for extension of labor laboratory services in the Eastern Cape, already signed off and DNA processing services expected to take off the, of take off towards the end of the, the year. The additional interventions, Deputy Speaker, it is what the president has already spoken about uh, uh, last week, that the partnership entered with the private sector who are prepared to avail the services from their laboratories to assist with the alleviation of the DNA backlog and a multidisciplinary scope with regard to DNA backlog and processing enhancement which will extend to other organization. The issue that has been a problem is the track and tracing relief. So immediately after the expiry of the contract with FDA, including the termination of the, the, the latest arrangement, the department with CETA developed a new track and trace system, which replaced the PCEM capability. The system has, active, has been activated on the 6th of April, the system complements and enhanced exhibit uh, track. Important to mention that the once halted DNA process has been unlocked. Current backlog addressed and structured multidisciplinary uh, project action plan. The contract management revived for consumables, uh, which, is, which include rape kits and corporate renewal progress address capacity. But the president has emphasized, uh, Deputy Speaker, that the public-private partnership, it is, it is important. And the, 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 the department has entered into an integrated task team, which has been established with private sectors and the South African police uh, uh, services. This thank you very process. much, sir. Thank you very thank much, you. sir. Your, your time has expired. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Um, thank you. Uh, the next member is Honorable Sharif. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker. The weakest link in the fight against gender-based violence and femicide is the South African police services. The DNA crisis is but only one of the reasons why the SAPs continue to fail women and members of the LGBT plus community. During the DA's oversight visit to provinces across the country, looking specifically at the interventions on government by government on GBVF has proven that there are too many gaps and cases gone and forgotten. The process around DNA rape kits at police stations and FCS units is not working. And we see these failures on the ground. This is why it is important to ensure that there are DNA rape kits available at Tutuzela care centers, because waiting to find the closest rape kit is simply ridiculous. After you, Minister, told us that these are stocked at every police station. Still waiting for a DNA rape kit today means TCCs and hospitals will have to ask survivors that have just been raped to wait for a police officer to find a rape kit. And this sometimes means that the survivor cannot wash for days because of fear of losing DNA evidence. This Honorable Jamat Peterson is what contributes to second degree trauma. Thank the universe for committed GBVF frontline workers that have to use their initiative to make up for the failure by the SAPs in collecting DNA. There are forensic nurses who told us that they need to use sanitary pads in an attempt to save as much DNA evidence as possible.
by asking survivors to store these pads in brown bags and bring them back to get processed. It seems as though everything in this country takes long and has long waiting periods from days to months and up to years. The slow processing of DNA is breaking down what needs to be a strong justice system. The backlog at DNA labs is shocking. And the fact that survivors and TCCs have to wait for months and sometimes years to get evidence back is literally allowing rapists to walk free and survivors left waiting for an incompetent state to ensure that the SAPs and DNA labs do their jobs in time. The slow pace in which this government moves is killing us. The only option we have is to fire the ANC. There are so many issues. And Minister, it is not only about doing better, just do something. DNA evidence is one of the most important aspects that lead to conviction, and this needs to be fixed now. I thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, the Minister. The Minister of Police. Thank you very much, Honorable Deputy Speaker. Thanks to the person who raised this uh, debate today, which happens to be Honorable Westfield. The only problem about him is that his memory has got a very short fit because he only started on the, on the year 2018. He forgets that the people that are in laboratory are going in court because they are arrested for corruption. He forgets that people in supply chain management are in court because they were arrested for corruption. So your memory is in a very short radius of your circle of thinking. Malugashon Perin, Parliament. Dolkaba Escorta Nalu Ramshanji. The backlog experience at the SEP Forensic Science Laboratories has given us sleepless nights. While it has been a nightmare for everyone relying on the service of the laboratories to find justice and closure. But as a police, we did not just toss and turn in our beds from the sleepless night on. We sprang into action, rolled up our sleeves, and put our heads together. We knew it was a race against time to agently find a way out of a nightmare holding the criminal justice system at home. As the Minister of Police, on behalf of the SEP, I want to take this opportunity to apologize sincerely to all victims of crime for the pain and anguish these delays have caused. We owe it to all of you to transparent about how we got here and how we'll improve this situation as we go forward. I'm not going to spend time on how we got here. I'm going to try to spend time how we're going to get out of this. Moreover, from June 2020, there were no electronic track and trace functionality available due to the discontinuation of the system by, by the service provider. I think it's what Honorable Kronewal spoke about. Uh, I know, Doctor, that you are good in law. Maybe they have hired you. That's why you know better that they're going in court and we don't know. Uh, please work with us, not with the people that work against the parliament. This meant the tracking and tracing of exhibit could only be done manually. This manual work saw a rapid build up as forensic analysts were only process, processing a fraction of what could be processed with the discontinued system. Furthermore, the casting of specimens for DNA also reached a bottleneck. This was a direct result of the shortage of the quantification keys or so-called DNA consumables. 
These kits are essential for DNA testing as it steps forensic science laboratory. The reality is that this particular shortage was due to poor contract management in SEPS. That's why we had to change the entire management in supply and laboratory. But we are here to forget where we started. Thank you. Currently, the national backlog at our forensic science laboratory stands at 208, 291 cases, not 225,000. Not 172,000. 208,291. Over 60, not 225. Maybe you have an exaggerated mathematics. Over 60,000 of these have been received by the laboratory but have not been analyzed. 36,626 are DNA related, and 82,000 of these are cases related to gender-based violence and femicide. Out of our four SEP forensic laboratories, the Houghton province experienced the largest degree of DNA, followed by Western Cape, followed by Eastern Cape, and then KZN. Jefferson? As the Honorable President has pronounced last week that the huge backlog is unacceptable, we fully confirm. We totally agree with that. The steps has been hard at work to implement an Asian turnaround plan for the sake of the all victims crime, especially women and children. About 42% of dockets for crimes committed against women and children that had been outstanding for over a year have been finalized. All cases related to the GPV, GPV and femicide are being prioritized based on guidance from the NPA. 77,485 such cases, which are court ready but have outstanding results from our forensic laboratory, are being processed. Over 2,500 of such cases have been finalized so far. Our goal is to bring normality back to the operations of the SEPS Forensic Science Laboratories within the next 18 months. We hope we are realistic about it. On our quest for the expand of the country forensic capacity, the building of the DNA analyst capacity of the Eastern Cape Forensic Laboratory is underway. A contract has been awarded and the preferred beta has commenced with the on-site preparations. The Eastern Cape and the KZN laboratories are currently providing limited service. Honorable members, another dilemma before us was the inability to track and trace exhibits of our, from our laboratories. This was due to the withdrawal of the system by the service provider in June 20. The SEPS has worked together with the state information, which is CETA, and developed a new system Check and trace forensic, and it's called the FAM system, is now fully operational. And that system is internally developed by the government. Where we're supposed to have paid 300 million, we paid only 3.5 million as a government to develop that system. The FAM system went live on the 6th of April and rolled out to the four SEPS forensic laboratories. FAM has checked and trace functionality and has replaced the previous system. Before this, before the 6th of April, forensic analysts could only track and trace forensic evidence manually. They, they were only processing around a thousand specimens a week, a, a, a week. But within a month since this has been established, a total of 63,000. 576 cases were registered, track and changed auto automatically, which means we're doing 11,000 a week instead of 1,000 a week. There is a contract management system overhaul that is currently underway in the SEP forensic laboratories. Currently, long-term contracts are under review and are being addressed. 
A total of 16 new contracts have been awarded so far, and each of them have an average of two to three years. So we're not going to have a problem now since the contracts are there and out of the long time. Seven more contracts are under review. The procurement of consumables of quotation basis has been realized through a 4.2 million rent deviation granted by the national treasurer. Why this deviation? Because the supply chain system were taking too long. We had to run to treasurer who has granted us this permission. So we do have consumables now. I would like to again to assure the nation that this particular task is received agent attention and 250 million has been found to give extra money on this matter. While COVID-19 protocols are compro compromising the availability operational capacity in our laboratories, we are stepping up on human capacity building to meet the demand. So far, Honorable Mr. Wilson, so far, 128 scientists have been promoted internally and now working in the operation environment of the forensic laboratory. A further 28 uh, of them appointments are to be finalized and will provide support service. We're also recruiting outside of the organization for forensic analysts who will work at warrant office level. When this recruitment process is finalized, there will be an additional 150 scientist analysts to add to the existing staff complement by end of July. This is the capaci capacity we're building. The forensic analyst workforce has also be been adjusted to allow for overtime. Continuous talks with labor is there to make sure that we are working on overtime. Our goal is to have 40% of human resources dedicated for addressing the backlog while 60% of the staff at our laboratories will handle the new cases. Chairperson, we must ensure that history never repeats itself. This is, this is why we have put in place the following checks and balances. One, strengthening internal controls and oversight on the functioning of the forensic science laboratory. Two, eliminate corrupt practices. Three, implement an effective contract management plan. Four, we, we are also developing an early warning system for effective response to system. Five, keeping problems experienced in, in, the, in the firm. Six, there will also be a weekly technical and mechanical progress evaluation by SEBS and the DNA board. Seven, lastly, there will be also collaborative work between SEBS, Department of Justice, and NPA. Chairperson, want to assure that this Akas House and the rest of the nation that while we are not out of the woods, yet we certainly are on the path moving towards improvement. We are fully aware of the significant severe impact that the backlog and delays have caused. However, we remain confident in our intervention measures that are aimed at regaining public confidence and equally restore organizational reputation and image. In conclusion, the combined effort aimed at normalizing this current situation are already yielding fruit. On the 23rd, April 2021, a Pinoni man was, confer was confirmed as a serious rapist after being positively linked to 60 rape cases through DNA identification, and we expect him to reach 100. This man was arrested on the single rape charge and the evidence collected at the crime scene matched evidence collected over 60 other rape cases. This case is one of the GPV-related cases that have been prioritized. However, it is one of many cases that are now before the courts as the backlog is accordingly addressed and eventually cleared. Chairperson, we are turning the tide and this environment will change. This is what you're using. Chairperson, there is an honorable member here called Terry Plager. Terry Plager worked as the police. I want to make a call on the leadership of the DA to investigate him. Investigate him 
He was a, a part of the three mosquitoes. He was Shela, deputy, a deputy commissioner, and was one who was is a, a, a reporting to him as a head of the property of the police and himself as a head of the property of the South African police. You check how it managed to be running some properties today. What they did, they would produce the police station like in under one, which was budgeted at, at 15 million, but it was built Sorry, on 47 million. On a so point of you, order. You check yes. on Honorable list. Minister, Honorable Minister, hold on. Uh, Honorable Mazzoni. Uh, Deputy Speaker, through you, I would be very pleased to investigate what the minister is saying, but as he knows, he has to produce a substantive motion, and once he's done that, I will do a full investigation and report back to him with the greatest pleasure. Thank you. Honourable Minister, motion is sustained, that uh, point of order is sustained. No, no, I don't think, I didn't say we must debate it here. I said they must investigate or give information. I didn't talk about, uh, about debate. I spoke about investigation. So I'll, I'll, I'll give it, I'll give it to you. Here's one of the persons. Uh, Honorable to, Minister, Honorable Minister, Honorable Minister, don't proceed with that line. Uh, if you want to talk any more about what he does, what he did, what roles he played and so on, in what you are suggesting, you have to do it by a, a substantive motion. You know that, uh, Honorable Minister. We uh, have to think of us. The monger, we come together. See a bomb. Well, well, we have to think of together. Thank you very much, Honorable Members. That concludes the debate. Uh, we'll now move to motions without notice. Honorable Deputy Speaker. Honorable Deputy Speaker. Yes, ma'am. Can you allow Honorable Tombella to relieve you? Oh, Puma. Okay, I shouldn't ask that. Let me. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, House Chairperson, uh, Honorable Tombella, I hand over to you now. I, you I have to be on a call with the UN. I'll step aside, Honorable uh, House Chair. I'm not running away. I'm just stepping aside to take that call. No Thank problem. You. Thank, Thank you, you very Thank much. You. Thank you, Chair. Uh, we now come to motions without notice, honorable members. Does any member of the industry wish to give a motion of, without notice? Yes, honorable House Chair. Sipagama Okunyagazi Sangapanje Kosaziso, motion on the passing of the Zulu monarch queen, Shiwe Mandombi. Zamini Zulu. See African National Congress, I Congolose, Sidulisa and a pine, the Gwesaziso, Ukutilentu. O Congolose, Ukulisa, Okukulu, Kutabuga, Gokushiwa, M. Sabeni, Gokukulu, Kuzuma Loku, Gwentofukazi, Undunkulu, Ushiwe, Mantombi, Zamini Zulu, Obei Bamba, Bukosi, Yes, Sizwe, Samazulu. Wele sinem sa zinga ma shumi amabili amabili na saka lo na saka lo lunye kumba sa kulonyaga opezu lunge mupa koko kula iskashan into vugazi ibine minyaga enga ma shumi aisi tu ama aisi tu pananta nugu pela ubudala envange koko koko ukuba i iba iba ande buko ibe iba mbaba buko si desizo samazulu. Gumshaga twenty four Gumbasa Gulunyago Pezulu, Kusalin Delo Ugutu Kubegue, Osongena Esikuncheni Sikabayete, Ose Koteme Ungangezwe, Lake Ugutuizelitini, Kapeguzul Ukumbulanje Ukongoloso Uguti Unlofugazi, Wata Tela, Esizweni Samazulu, Ekata Nesilo, Uzelitini, Gonyaga nineteen seventy seven. Waba Ulunkulu is a tattoo. Ungu tato, Wabo Kosi, Seabong, Sikulisa, Kale, San and Sisu Sawazul, Seabong. Thank you very much. If there are no objections, I put the motion. 
no objections agreed to. We now move to the DA. Thank you, Chair. I hereby move on behalf of the DA, one, that this house note that TTM FC beat Chippa United FC, one nil in the final of NetBank Cup, two, congratulate TTM FC on their historical victory. Three notes that TTM FC is the second football club from Limpopo that wins NetBank Cup after Barocco FC won it in 2019. Four, recognize that the Limpopo team has made historical rules after winning the presidential NetBank Cup in the first season of the DSTV Premiership. Five, acknowledge that the TTM will represent the country in the CAF Cup next year. Six, congratulate the coach and the players, Mpo, Malega, David, Mateba, and all players and the management of TTM FC for winning the cup. I so move. Thank you. Thank you very much, honorable member. If there are no objections, I put the motion. No objection. The motion is agreed to. The EFF. Uh, thank you very much, House Chair. The EFF moves without notice that the House notes the genocide committed by the Israeli state against the Palestinian people during the religious period of Ramadan, just to ensure a provocative demonstration of Zionist land thieves that commemorates the dispossession of Palestinian land in 1967 takes place. Further other notes that for far too long, this government has played silent diplomacy with a state that has dispossessed the people of Palestine of their land, jailed them without fair trial, and used ammunition against women and children. Acknowledges that it is shocking that for a country that has its own experience of land dispossession and crimes against humanity, there is a silence when war, when war criminals commemorate land theft and crimes against humanity elsewhere. Believes that South, Africa, South Africans must do all for the people of Palestine in the same way that the people of Cuba did for us during the dark days of apartheid. Although we expect nothing from the official opposition and right-wingers amongst us here because their coffers depend on the blood of Palestinians continuing to flow on the streets of Jerusalem, we move that this house supports a show of solidarity with the people of Palestine, the call for the closure of the Israeli embassy in South Africa and withdrawal of the South African ambassador in Tel Aviv for the continued human rights violations against Palestinian people until the land that belongs to the people of Palestine is returned to its owners and condemns with contempt the violence perpetrated by apartheid Israel state on unarmed Palestinian people. I thank you. Thank you very much, honorable member. I see the no objections, I put the motion. Okay, the DA objects. The DA objects. The motion will be converted to a notice of motion. Thank you. ANC, your turn. Thank you very much, Chairperson. I, the African National Congress move without notice that the House welcomes the appointment of Hugo Bruce as new Bafana Bafana coach by the South African Football Association, SAFA, on Wednesday, 5th May, 2021. Acknowledges that the 69-year-old Belgian who signed a five-year contract is expected in South Africa next week where he will announce his support staff acknowledges that the appointment of Mr. Bruce ends weeks of speculation about who was going to be the next coach to take charge of Bafana Bafana, recalls that he previously guided Cameroon national soccer team to the 2017 AFCON title the, and the FIFA Confederations Cup later that year, and congratulates Hugo Bruce on his appointment and wishing him well on his assignment of taking Bafana Bafana to the World Cup. I so move. Thank you. Thank you, Principal. If there are no objections, I put the motion. No objections, motion agreed to. Uh, IFP. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. On behalf of the entire Freedom Party, I move without notice that the House notes that in the midst of this painful time of loss for the Amazulu nation, 
Pope has risen with the naming of an heir to the throne, welcomes the announcement of His Royal Highness Prince Mrs. Zulu, Zulu Gazwelitini as the new king of the Amazulu nation, as he takes the reins from his late father, His Majesty King Goodwill Zulitini Kape Yuzulu. Further notes that the new king has pursued international studies, is well-traveled, and understands the present times and the struggles of his people and our nation at large. Pledges support to His Majesty King Mrs. Zulu, Zulu Gazwelitini, noting that his reign will continue an un uninterrupted lineage of leadership that has seen the Zulu nation thrive for more than 200 years since its founding by King Shaga Kasenja Korma acknowledges that His Majesty ascends to the throne in a time of economic hardship for our country, as well as a global pandemic. And finally, recognizes the role Prince Mangosutu Wutelezi MP played in his capacity as traditional prime minister to the Zulu nation, displaying sound leadership, guidance and fortitude during the sad time. And for all that he has done to secure peace, continuity and the protection of the Zulu monarch and nation, as well as its rich traditions and values. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to remember. If there are no objections, I put the motion. No objections, motion agreed to. Uh, on front, plus. Thank you, House Chair. I hereby move on behalf of the Freedom Front Plus that this house notes that on 9 April 2021, the meal kit delivery company, Yukuk, announced an initiative aimed at closing the gap between young farming entrepreneurs, agri-processors and the end consumer. Further notes that the project name Kulisa Mafama is being developed in partnership with the Philippi Economic Development Initiative and development organization, Abalimi Bezakaya congratulates the UCOOK team on this initi initiative to provide structured mentoring, infrastructure support and resources to small scale farmers through this partnership. Recognizes that without the necessary market access and support, subsistence farmers will largely be unable to grow businesses and move out of the subsistence farming sphere. Further recognizes that this pilot will be used for further program development with the aim of rolling it out to a larger community of farmers. I so move. Thank you very much, Honorable Member. If there are no objections, I put the motion. No objections, motion agreed to. ANC. Thank you, Honorable House Chair. The ANC move without notice that the House note that World Information Society Day is celebrated each year on the 17th of May. Further note that the aim of the day is to remind the world of the vision of the World Summit on the Information Society to build a people-centered, inclusive and development oriented information society based on the fundamental human rights. Acknowledge that uh, World Information Society Day promotes people's awareness of the power of information and communication to build societies in which they can create, access, use, and share information and acknowledge to achieve the full potential. Further acknowledge that uh, organizations such as UNESCO actively take part in the day by inviting people to engage in various activities to promote campaigns centered on this event and call on all to observe this day and to help raise awareness of the possibilities that the internet and the other information and communication technologies could bring to societies and economies as well as of ways to bridge the digital divide. I thank you, Honorable House Chair. I, there, if there are no objections, I put the motion. No objections, agreed to. ACDP. 
Thank you, House Chair. On behalf of the African Christian Democratic Party, I move without notice that the House acknowledges the outstanding performance of South African Olympic hero Wade Van Niekerk, who, who in 2017 suffered a setback when he injured his knee during a celebrity touch rugby match. This injury occurred after he had won the gold medal in the 2016 Olympic Games, the men's 400 meter in a record time of 43.03 seconds. Against all odds and like the true champion that he is, Faniker has recovered and is currently in the USA preparing to defend his 400 meter Olympic title at this year's games in Tokyo, scheduled to get underway in July. Wishes Faniker, Wade Faniker, and all our Olympic athletes well at the Olympic games, I so move. Thank you very much, Honorable Prince. If there are no objections, I put the motion. No objections, motion agreed to. UDM. UDM. ATM. ATM. DA. Thank you, Chair. I hereby move on behalf of the Democratic Alliance that this House notes that Mr. Peter Sutton, Councillor for Ward 78 in the city of Tswane, has been nominated as a hero of the community by the record newspaper in Centurion. Acknowledges Mr. Sutton uh, has championed such causes as the cleanup of the Centurion Lake, the prevention of river pollution, and the construction of the Centurion taxi rank. Further acknowledges that while many of these issues cannot be solved in the short term, Mr. Sutton's dedication to his community and his tireless efforts on their behalf should serve as an example to ward councillors across the Republic. Recognizes there's a need for many more councillors like Mr. Sutton who dedicate their lives to the service of the community, especially as we approach the 2021 local government election. Congratulates Mr. Sutton on his nomination. And if you'd allow me, Chair, also the birth of his daughter just this morning and wish him success in the contest and in his future endeavors. I so move. Thank you, honorable member. If there are no objections, I put the motion. No objections, motion agreed to. Shall we move to the EFF? Thank EFF. you, Chair. EFF moves to start notice that the House notes at the Peninsula University of Technology, CPUT retained the Varsity Shield rugby title after a win against Walter Sulu University All Blacks by 30 to 26 in extra time at the Tux Stadium in Pretoria on Sunday. Further notes that the full time that full time saw the two teams level at 26 each, forcing the game into extra time acknowledges the collective effort of the squad of 23, which saw the Cape side winning the game in the dying moments of extra time. Further acknowledges the dedication and commitment of the management and support staff, consisting of coach Alistair Tace, assistant coach Joel Kaya Nokwe, conditioning coach Sally Jacobs, and physiotherapist Byron Isaacs. Realizes that sport is a powerful means of identification to an otherwise abstract notion of a nation. Black people make up 90% of the population and no less than 50% of the rugby players in South Africa. Yet our national rugby team does not reflect this reality. It recognizes the performances of rugby teams like CPUT and Walter Sassoulou University show that our national rugby team should already have been more representative and would most likely have been even more successful than it has been over the past 30 years of unification further realizes that black people who excel in sport and get to represent South Africa in rugby and cricket still experience racism and are labeled quota players by management and coaching staff and congratulates CPUT for retaining the varsity shield Thank champion title and has moved to confront racism and derogatory labels in sport. I so move. Honorable member, thank you very much. Your time is up. If there are no objections, I put the motion. The DA objects. 
there are objections, the motion will be converted to a notice of motion. Uh, shall we move to the ANC? Thank you, House Chair. The name is Judith Chabalalam on virtual. The motion is on the passing of former Johannesburg Mayor and ANC Chief Whip, Mr. Isaac Mohase. The African National Congress moves without notice that the House notes with sadness the passing on of the city of Johannesburg, first democratically elected mayor and former ANC Chief Whip, Mr. Isaac Mohase, popularly known as Ntate Mohase, on this Tuesday, 27th of April, 2021. Further recalls that he wore the mural chain between 19 and 2000 and handed them over to them, Council and current NCOP chairperson, Honorable Ndate Amos Masondo, remembers Ndate Mukhase as the doyen of the civic movement and a veteran of the freedom struggle. Further remembers that he was part of the leadership of Soweto Crisis Committee and was one of the first co-presidents of the Soweto Civic Association when it was founded in 1984. Recalls that he became an NC member of parliament in 2004 and was appoint, appointed as the party's chief whip in parliament in 2007 and conveys condolences to his family, friends, and the African National Congress. And would like to say long live to the undying spirit of Ndatem Khase. Long live. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chabalala. Good. Good. NFP, the opportunity. Thank you, House Honourable. Chairperson. On behalf of the National Freedom Party, I move without notice that this House notes that on the 7th of May 2021, the apartheid Israel police stormed the Al Aqsa Mosque compound, injuring 178 Palestinians, of which 88 had to be transported to hospital and 83 were hospitalized. Further notes that despite the large number of injured Palestinians needing attention, the Israeli police force continued to storm the Al-Aqsa Mosque, targeting worshippers who were praying inside the mosque. The barbaric attack of the Israeli police uh, on worshippers in Jerusalem's Al-Aqsa Mosque is in violation of international law safeguarding Arab rights. The Israeli acts of aggression and terror and continuous depiction of Palestinian people, both Muslims and Christians, from Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood is in violation of the human rights of Palestinian people. Understands that despite condemnation from various nations worldwide, Israel continues to harass, intimidate, threaten, murder, and evict Palestinian people, condemns the barbaric acts of terrorism inflicted upon the Palestinian people by the apartheid Israel government, calls on government to expedite the downgrading of the South African embassy in Israel for days on offer and further calls on the South African government to explore all avenues in international forum to protect the rights of Palestinian people and create a conducive environment for the Palestinian people to live freely on their land and ensure that Israel complies with all international law. I so move. Thank you, honorable member. The ACDP objects. The, the DA objects. Object. Uh, object. uh, there are objections. The motion will be converted to a motion. No, I knew there was a Honorable member. Honorable but, members. Uh, Honorable Tombella. Honorable House, chair. Chair. Uh, House Chairperson, I am informed that the motion read by the Honorable Chabalala for the ANC will not go through since the question was not put. Oh, I'm sorry. I am sorry. Um, you can again thank you uh, can we can we then honorable members put the this if there is no objection to the motion of the ANC I put the motion if there are no objections the motion is agreed to then we move to the NFP motion, which was objected to. Therefore, the motion will be converted to a notice of motion. The next party is the ANC. Thank you very much, House Chair. 
On behalf of the gigantic African National Congress, I move, move without notice that the House notes that on Saturday, 1 May 2021, UNISA bid farewell to its uh, stalwart acad academic and vice chancellor, Professor Mandla Makai, who has now left the institution after 33 years of service. Remember that among the many responsibilities he had, Professor Makanya was the ex official member of the University Council. That required him to be an important link between the council and the university community, whilst being the lens through which the council saw and understood the university environment. Understand that he also had several positions outside UNISA, such as treasurer of the African Council for Distance Education and the president of the Higher Education Teaching and Learning Association. As I recall that uh, he shaped his life as a scholar, the journey that saw him contribute to the growth of UNISA and he rose through the ranks and he was appointed principal and vice chancellor in 2011. Acknowledge is that he has during his time at UNISA worked under four vice chancellors and has demonstrated the loyalty and commitment, commitment to the institution. And he had been at the center of its trials and tribulations. And lastly, the house knows that I wish to congratulate Professor Makanya on a splendid service and wishing him well in his retirement. Thank you very much. If there are no objections, I put the motion. No objections. Motion agreed to. A I C. A I C. Pope. ANC. House Chair. The African National Congress moved without notice that the House notes with pride that South Africa secured its first ever gold medal at the World Athletics Relay Championships with the national four by 100 meter team delivering a memorable performance in the final in Silesia, Poland on Sunday, the 3rd of May, 2021. Two further notes that the race was so close such that the run-up country Brazil was already celebrating before South Africans were announced as winners. Three, remembers that the South African record holder, Akani Simbini, inspired the team, which included Tam Tan Andolzolo, Give Leo Taylor and Clarence Muhai to success. For recall that the last time our country won the four by hundred meter event was in 2001 at the World Champions. And congratulate the team, the coaching staff, and medical staff that has been assisting them. Madam Chair, I so move. Thank you. If there are no objections, I put the motion. No objections, motion agreed to. Uh, DA. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, House Chairperson. I hereby move on behalf of the Democratic Alliance that this House notes that the Northwest University NWU Stawana Football Club was promoted from the SAB League to the ABC Mozepa League in November of 2020. Acknowledge that the NWU Tawana largely consists of students studying at the said university and that the team is currently the only Purchase Room based team playing in the ABC Mozepa League. Recognize that the NWU Tawana currently ranks in the number four position in the league that consists of two streams. Congratulate their coach, Mr. Pule Michael Seleka the management team and each player on this encouraging achievement. Wishes the NWU Tawana all the best in the quest to ultimately be promoted into the GLED Africa League. I so move. Thank you, Honorable House Chair. Thank you, Honorable Member. If there are no objections, I put the motion. No objections, motion agreed to. Uh, PAC. PAC, Al Jamal. Uh, Al -Jamal. Thank, you very, thank you very much, Honorable Al Jamal moves 
without notice that the house acknowledges the 100th birthday of district six legend, Mrs. Tarifa Khan, celebrated on the 25th of April, 2021. Note that Khan and her husband own the famous Coach Cafe in Hanover Street in District 6. He organizes the 100th birthday wish to return to a home in District 6. Further recognize that it's also a wish to die in a home in District 6. And the house congratulates Mrs. Khan on her 100th birthday. I shall move. Thank you very much, Honorable Member. If there are no objections, I put the motion. No objections, motion agreed to. African National Congress. Thank you very much, uh, House Chairperson. On behalf of the Chief Whip of the Majority Party, I move without notice that the House notes that the World Information Society Day is celebrated today on the 17th of May. Further notes that the aim of this day is to remind the world of the vision of the World Summit of Information Society to, feel, to build a people-centered, inclusive, and development-orientated information society based on fundamental human rights. Knowledge is that the World Information Society Day promotes people's awareness of the power to informate, power of information and communication to build societies in which they can create, access, and use, use and share information and knowledge to achieve their full potential. Further acknowledges that organizations such as UNESCO actively particip participate in the day by inviting people to engage in various activities to promote campaign centers centered on this, on this event and calls on, on all to observe this day and to help raise awareness of the possibilities that the internet and other information and communication technologies could bring to societies and economies as well as ways to bridge the dig digital divide. I so much. Thank you, honorable member. If there are no objections, I put the motion. Honorable house chair. Thank you, uh, Yabba Chair. I'm informed that this motion has already been moved. Oh, oh. that is. Oh, yes, okay. Chair. All right. no. been... Is that the case, Honorable Chair? Uh, okay, I understand. I will explain to the, the table staff. You can continue. Okay. If there are no objections, I put the motion. No objections, the motion agreed to. Honorable members, that concludes the motions without notice. And the last item on the other paper is notices of motion. Does any member of the ANC wish to give a notice of motion? Yes, Chairperson. Go ahead, Honorable Member. I hereby move on behalf of, of the ANC that in its next sitting, the House debates the implementation and monitoring of South, Africa, uh, South Africa's national climate change obligations. I so move. Thank you very much, Honorable Member. Uh, a D8. Thank you very much, House Chairperson. I hereby move on behalf of the Democratic Alliance that at its next sitting, this House debates the unfolding leadership crisis within the South African Police Service and its impact on the safety of all South Africans. Thank you, Honorable Member. Are you done? Thank you very much. Uh, we move to the EF. EFF. EFF, are you there? I pass. ANC. Thank you, Chairperson. I hereby move on behalf of the ANC that 
that in its next sitting, the House debates resolving the social antagonisms created by apartheid systems in the form of national oppression, class super exploitation, and patriarchy. I so move. Thank you very much, honorable member. IFK. Chairperson. Yeah, Chairperson, it seems Honorable Sangwa is having a uh, connection problem. So I'll move on behalf of the Encarta Freedom Party. I hereby give notice that I shall move at the next sitting that this House debates the need for government and our nation at large to redouble its efforts to fight gender based violence as well as supporting women in rural areas. I so move. FF plus. Uh, I hereby give notice of a motion that on the next sitting of the House, I shall move on behalf of the Freedom Plus that the House debates the ensuing health crisis in cities and towns due to municipalities' failure to deliver basic services, with specific reference to the Mangaung Metro, where refuge is not removed, and even the fact that residents are paying for services they do not receive. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. Uh, ANC. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. I hereby move on behalf of the ANC that in its next sitting, the House debates addressing the COVID-19 pandemic by tackling ethnic inequalities across many fronts, including reducing structural inequalities and addressing barriers to equitable care and improving uptake of testing and vaccination. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Member. ACDP. ACDP. Thank you, Pastor. Oh, thank you. Okay. Honorable yes. ACDP is here. Oh, okay, Mr. Frank, can go ahead. Uh, thank you, Chair. I, this is the motion of Honorable Sukers, who is unable to connect. Uh, and on behalf of the African Christian Democratic Party, I give notice that I shall move that the House debates the impact of regulations imposed on the religious sector during the strict lockdown period and the role of, re of the religious sector as a critical partner of the state in times of social crisis. I so move. Thank you very much, Honorable Frank. Uh, UDM. UDM. ATM. ATM. DA. Thank you, Chairperson. I hereby move on behalf of the Democratic Alliance that at its next sitting, this House debates the impact of the lack of strategic support to independent theatres to deal with the crisis they faced due to the COVID-19 pandemic, especially in light of the recent closure of the Fugit and other smaller theatres. I so move. Thank you very much. Now I move to the EFF. Thank you, Chair. Chair, I move on behalf of the EFF that the House in its next sitting debates the snail pace in which the SSA is moving in ensuring that all supply chain managers across the spheres of government are vetted. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Member. Uh, ANC. Thank you, House Chair. I have a move on behalf of the ANC that in its next sitting, the House debates ethical economic needs to proceed from the basic principle that the economy is meant to save society and should be reflected in measures to deal with inequality in terms of income, assets, opportunity, social capital, and spatial dynamics. I so move. Good. Good. NFP. 
NFK, African National Congress. Thank you, Chair. On behalf of the ANC, I move that in its next meeting, the House begins monitoring net first efficiency in terms of tenure allowances to the students, local offices for access and data management. I think. Thank you very much. Uh, AIC. AIC. Hope. African National Congress. Thank you, Chair. I hereby move on behalf of the ANC that in its next sitting, the House debate broad based transformation is for critical importance for South Africa to reignite the economy and address challenges of the past. I so move. Thank you very much. Democratic Alliance. Thank you, House Chair. I hereby move on behalf of the Democratic Alliance that at its next sitting, this House debates the future financial security of over 6 million unemployed South Africans who stopped received the 350 SRD unemployment grant on 30 April 2021. I so move. Thank you very much, Honorable Member. PAC. Al Jama. Al Jama. African National Congress. Thank you, Al Chair. I hear my move on behalf of the ANC that in this next sitting, the House debates cyberbullying through online communication platforms and its negative effects on society. I thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, honorable members, that concludes notices of motion and the business for the day. The House is adjourned. Thank, thank you, you, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, go Commander, right. Chair.